What's up, guys? Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I'm excited to be here, and we are live, live, live. Um, I'm going to be introducing a show called Pounders Live. Some of you might remember it where I have random guests on, except this time I'm going to be doing it from my own house. I'm going to be interviewing people all over the place. Uh, I've got a, already several really exciting guests lined up for this show. What you guys are going to be witnessing tonight is a show that me and Dan Bedoni did together on his channel a few weeks ago. Make sure you check that out, and after that, we're going to do a live Q&A, like, so you can go over there and ask questions on the chat, and join us and hang out with us for a little bit longer over there. Uh, that's going to be, the link is in the description to that. Make sure you subscribe to that channel, and enjoy the show. And welcome, everybody, to the Dan Bedani Show, a Spiritual Warfare Friday. we got an awesome show tonight, guys, a uh, very, very intriguing show. Uh, even though me and John Pounders, I guess, coming on, uh, we've been researching this stuff for years, and it just, it's just that much more fascinated as time goes on. So um, it never gets old, really, it doesn't. So alien disclosure and hybrid babies, uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, in just a moment here, but man, I tell you, man, this stuff is just wild, it really is. So uh, let's introduce our guest, and if you don't know him already, um, it's John Pounders, host of Nice TV, The Midnight Ride, and all that good stuff. So, uh, John, what is up, my brother? And it's what's a pleasure up, to have man? You on what's here. up? What's up? What's up? You Dan and Dan Bedondi live people. It's good to be here, man. I'm. Uh, this is always an honor to talk about subjects like this. You know, us conspiracy theorists. And I'd use the quotes <laughs> for that, um, have been right about all these things. Some of these things, of course, not everybody's right about everything, but mm. all along, and then they start getting confirmed. Um, but I think that looking at them through the narrative of what we're going to look at them through the night is actually the truth versus the narrative of the enemy of humanities, um, opinion on this whole thing. So I'm excited, man. It's good. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely, and uh, it's exciting. I'm like proud to be able to call you a brother, man. So I, uh, me and John's been friends for about three years now, three four years, and um, so it's, it's gone. The time's gone by, man. Dozens yeah. of shows, and I didn't even realize how many shows we did together. I was looking through the, my um, uh, hard drive with shows and all that with you and John Hall, man, and David, and uh, wow, it's like a lot of shows. They just uh, go right by real quick, man. And uh, I'm honored to have you on to talk about this tonight because this is a huge subject, and uh, people not you know it's, it's all over the news. The media is now acknowledging this stuff, and uh, and of course through the other years, um, they used to use plausible deniability. They admit it, but they don't. But they want to keep you interested in it. And if they use plausible deniability, they know you're going to get that much more interested. So when it's that time to push their alien agenda, everybody's going to fall for a hook, line, and sinker. Uh, so um, like I said, me and John's been studying this for many years. And uh, we're going to discuss what's going on in the news. Um, you know, these things are actually impregnating people. It's crazy, man. And, um, and also how the Bible describes the stuff, too. And, uh, the, you know, we're going to... Uh, people like Alistair Crowley describing these things, but not as what you think they are. Uh, we're just going to go all over the place with this, man, and we're just going to have some fun with this, engage with people in the chat room, all this other good stuff. So uh, we're going to have fun this time uh, in, the, in this show here because usually talk about some occultic stuff and all that, but this is to do with both. And ultimately at the end, of course, we're going to leave you off what God has to say about this and what you know, the future is, and uh, so don't be afraid, you know what I mean? Some people are afraid, some people are excited, but for the wrong reason. We're going to leave it off, uh, basically at the end of the show, what uh, Heavenly Father has to say. So, John, uh, if you want to take the helm here, go yeah, for it, man. man so, you, you, what you said there at the beginning was so true. We have, we've been studying this for a long time, and um, combined with other researchers, we know there's, you know, years and years, I'm talking decades of of information being shared and, and and looked at this is not something we just looked at the other day and mm. and decided to talk about in fact this stuff is deeply embedded in the scripture uh, about what's going to happen the bible talks about this great deception that's coming to the entire world and it would deceive even the elect if it were possible and i think it's going to be possible for some a lot of people to be deceived i think a lot of people are already deceived but you see this uh, deception that has several tentacles to it right it's got several different arms so you've got the the manipulation of of the biology of humanity as one arm you have the manipulation of the money system as another arm you have the manipulation of freedom as another arm and you have also the manipulation of human life i mean everything um together is going to happen in the end and it's all going to be done 
under the guise of a deception that a lot of people are going to think that they're here to help. This is all here to help. This is all good because this is what we've been socially conditioned to accept. Um, when I look at all of the different movies, um, TV shows, the news articles, the, um, the sightings that people have, it describes something um, that is alien-like, right? Alien. We 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 see them as alien because they're what the term alien means. They're just not. They're not from around here. But I believe, in fact, they are from around here, and they are actually here in the earth. They're not from outer space. I don't believe that. I believe that there are. There's a difference between. Um, and and I look. I don't know everything, but I'm just going to say this. This is something that I think is possible. That there's a difference between the Watchers and certain kinds of angels. They're a different class of angel, mm. and I think that there there are many of them here on Earth. We we've heard reports of Russians of the Russian uh, intelligence community talking about uh, the knowing that there are UFOs rising up out of the water. We know that there are programs over in Antarctica. Uh, Admiral Byrd sent men out there for Project uh, Operation Fishbowl. Uh, thousands of them died. I don't, a lot of people don't know about this, but Admiral Byrd sent men there because they were trying to f get down there to do something. They, a lot of them died, and that means that there's some kind of presence down there that they couldn't get past. And it also, uh, you know, there's walls down there, according to his journals. And so there's a lot going on that most people aren't going to know about because it really actually takes you digging down and looking into things close to formulate an opinion on it, right? You can't really have, it's hard to have a full opinion on something unless you've looked at all of the information. And so, you know, this is this is what we're going to talk about tonight. I know in the scriptures, uh, Dan, uh, we talked about this, Genesis 6, it talks about the sons of God coming down to the daughters of men. And I'll just read it for those sure. of you that um, have never read this before. But I think it's very interesting because I remember the first time I read the Bible with open eyes, right? I, I would, I, and this is after being in Christian school most of my life, uh, well, all my life from the time I was a kid till till grade twelve, and then uh, going to Bible college, and this never jumped out at me ever before. Why? I have no idea, right? I think you have to have eyes to see to see this stuff. So. I, I pick up the Bible again and I'm like, I'm throwing out all of the commentary that I've ever learned. I'm throwing out every idea that I've ever learned for, for now until I can soak in what the Bible says. And I'm going to read the Bible word for word the entire way through. And I'm going to see what I think about it. I want to see what's going on here. And I got to Genesis six. And, and once I got to Genesis six, I went, I, I was stuck on that for a very long time. I continued reading but always in the backdrop, this research on Genesis 6 was there. I just couldn't I couldn't shake it, right? So obviously that led me from Genesis 6 to the book of Enoch and uh, those sources there. And uh, so I'm just going to read Genesis 6 to you guys real quick, uh, starting in verse 1. It says, And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be 122 years. And then get this, in the verse 4 it says, There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men of old, the men of renown. So we see this event that took place. And of course, there's the, the Sethite theory that people believe that this isn't talking about angels at all. It's talking about the sons of Seth marrying the daughters of Cain. And they uh, interbred and, and create. And I don't know how they think they created giants. That doesn't make sense to me. But no. this is this is what uh, I believe is these these watchers, these angels, the, the Book of Enoch calls them watchers, came to the daughters of men bear children of them, just like it says, and the same became mighty men of old, men of renown. Um, and they were giants. They were huge giants. And, and you see rock formations that look like these giant creatures. You know, things lived a lot longer back then. Um, hundreds of years, almost a thousand years, men lived that long. And also animals as well. So you have these huge giant creatures that are allowed to grow and grow and grow. 
and you also have these giant men and we don't know how big the first men were we have no idea nobody's uh, found the first men first women um but they we can guess and we can probably believe that they were bigger than we are and much stronger than we are and also uh, much more capable than we are because you know dna degrades over years as it's spread out and the first men had all the DNA of every single human being that ever existed inside of them. So they were probably big and strong. So these giants were big and strong as well. Um, but this event took place. And it, and if you continue on this, it'll, it'll say that in Noah, he tells Noah to build an ark. And Noah builds this ark because he said all flesh is corrupted. Um, I can't remember what verse, verse this 12. is. Let me find. Verse 12, it says, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. The earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And he tells him to make an ark. And, and it says that he picked Noah. And this is, um, let me find the verse that says that. It says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's verse 8. In verse 9, it says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and... This is the key right here, and perfect in his generations. Now, if you look up what that means, you're talking about genealogy. He was perfect in his genealogy, meaning he was human, fully human, from the seed of Adam all the way to where he's at. Um, but it says almost all. It says all flesh was corrupted, uh, except for Noah and his family, and so they were allowed to continue on. Yes, yeah, genetic code, so to speak, in DNA was perfect from the way he made Adam. And the rest of yes. the world, I mean, like you said, uh, all flesh, even the animals in most parts uh, and plant, everything, they were genetically destroying everything on the earth. Yeah, they were. And if you if we go into the book of Enoch um, and read a little bit about that in, in Enoch chapter 6, it starts in Enoch chapter 6. This is the same event that took place in there. Now, I believe in the legitimacy of the book of Enoch. I really do. I've, I've In fact, um, I, I don't have time to make all the arguments for it, but it's mentioned in the scripture, men mentioned in James, actually, with this event that we're talking about. James talks about them leaving their first estate. This is in James, or Jude, I'm sorry, Jude 1.6. It says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness and to the judgment of the great day. Now, that great day that we're talking about is the day when all hell breaks loose, basically. And that's uh, also you know, mentioned in the, so to speak. Revelation yeah, 16, and, too. Yeah, in Revelation 9, right? When the yep. four angels that are chained in the Euphrates yep. are unbound uh, and allowed to do war on mankind. And if you go to the next and, verse, John, on Jude 1 7. Yeah, go for it. Read it. Um, and it, it continues on. It said, even Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, like the manor, given, check this out, right? Giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Okay, that they're, they're having sex with strange flesh. What is that strange flesh? And uh, the verse right before is talking about the angels and uh, their first estate and, you know, what they were done. And do, you know what I mean? It, it, you see this uh, strange flesh is uh, these. You know, and if you go through history, I mean, like, history could back this up. Uh, if, you, you know, we never do this, but if you took the Bible out of the equation, you still got every ancient culture, the Egyptians, uh, Chinese, uh, the Mayans, the Aztecs, uh, just all through history, every ancient culture, even Native American history on my mother's side. The way I heard the stories when I was a kid about the six fingered people and everything else, and uh, every ancient culture talks about the giants. They talk about these strange beings and strange flesh type things, and also the flood. Every na every one of these things confirm it. So you know, what I mean, and then people say, "Well, that's just a ridiculous story from the Bible." No, uh, is uh, every ancient culture ridiculous too? They're all the stories, none of these people knew each other, and they all had the same stories. You know, what I mean, the Indians when they had their hand up to say how how. It wasn't saying hi. They counted your fingers, six fingers, six toes, some of these things had, and uh, they were strange flesh and everything. So you got world history, legit world history, backing up what the, uh, what the Word of God has to say. And uh, when John was mentioned to Enoch, Enoch, uh, in the, not to confuse with the evil Enoch, he, there was the first one, Cain's son. We're not talking about him. We're talking about the seventh from Adam, which was Noah's great-grandfather, Enoch, uh, who the Bible, today's canon, says he was a man who walked with God and was taken up with God and acknowledges him as being his prophet. You know what I mean? So 
Um, so you can have your judgment, which you, you know, if you like Enoch and not, we respect that. Okay, but you know when John and uh, David they did an extensive series on the NYC TV network. Uh, that we promote all the time. You just seen in the opening of the show here. Uh, ex- uh, th- what do you got? Thirty-seven shows on that now. Uh, yeah, we're all the way. I don't know exactly how many shows we have on that. We're uh, up to, um, and I can't remember what chapter. We're we're going through the entire thing. We're mm-hmm. way up. We're way up there in the chapters, though. I think you're right, around thirty-seven, and it gets better and better. I mean, we're literally diving deep into it, and um, all I can say is this that. It lines up so far. Everything lines up exactly with the scriptures, the way it says it's going to happen mm-hmm. and everything. I mean, it's just really profound. Um, Dan, do you have that uh, slide for the book of Enoch, uh, chapter uh, six? Yep. That's, um, do you want to, do you want to read that? Because I, I was going sure. to read next. I think people that way, uh, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to lead you into doing whatever you, if you had something else. No, but that's fine. I, to, for people to do that if you had the chapter or i can read it for you it's no big deal but i wanted to tell you this too but you know a lot of people that are in the church they believe this has never happened this is never going to happen this is not something that even happens it's po- impossible uh but you know in first corinthians 11 paul is talking to them and he talks about women covering their head um for in verse 10 it says i'm sorry yeah it says for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels Hmm. now um if that wasn't a possibility then what is he talking about there yeah you know why is he warning that it's possible that this could happen and he has this thing too man uh genesis 6 clearly says like and that i mean i don't know where these people get that stuff from but because it clearly says in sexual talk uh the angels came into the woman, like the game, you know, sperm, you know how sex works, literally saying like, they came into the woman and they bought children. What more? I mean, like th- that's clear as day. And, uh, and it goes right into Enoch six, which is like basic uh, verbatim, verbatim to Genesis six it says, and it came to pass when children of men had multiplied in the, uh, those days. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, were born unto them. They were beautiful and comely daughters. So I talk about the daughters of men. They're beautiful. And the angels, okay, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose wives from among the children of men, and they begot us children. So that this is Sam Jiza, one of the head angels, uh, making a pack and um, he's swearing on this uh, imp- oath and implications that, hey, we're going to impregnate these women. And uh, Simjiza was a leader and said to them, I fear not ye that indeed agreed to this deed. I alone shall not have to pay the penalty of this great sin. So people say, well, why can't God forgive the fallen angels? Well, first of all, right here shows they knew exactly what they were doing, what the penalty would be, and the implications ahead of time before they did it. So that's why God is not going to forgive the, they're going to the lake of fire. But anyway, and they all show answer to him and said, let us swear an oath and all bind ourselves upon mutual implications, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing, to swear that an oath all together and bound themselves and by mutual implications upon it. And they were all 200 of these angels who all descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. Now, this is here is the thing. Here's one of my theories. So I think they did this for because they don't they we all knew like even from Genesis. OK, talks about the coming of the Messiah, the book of Enoch as well. Thousands of years before Jesus walked the earth, the coming in details of his birth, resurrection, the judgment in the book of Enoch. It all talks about this in detail, matching scripture. Right. So we they all knew the coming of the Messiah. So what I think this is my theory and I. Uh, I think I mentioned this to you, John, too, before. This is my theory. I think the the reason for them doing that, not just the lust after the woman, but I think to cut off the bloodline of Adam so there would never be nobody pure enough in the bloodline to, to host uh, Jesus manifesting in the flesh. And uh, I don't know if you would agree with that, John, because uh, that's my theory, and I think that's one of the reasons why they did that, besides also lusting after the woman. I, dude, I think you're exactly right, because in the book of Enoch, it talks about... Um, one of the satans now the bible the the bible talks about satan satan means adversary Mm -hmm. and in the book of enoch there's five satans mentioned and one of the satans tempts the watchers to do this so the agenda from the top dog was this for sure and they didn't may they may have done it not not knowing that that was the 
the end goal, but that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I definitely believe that. Yeah, and I, I think one of those Satans, uh, is, it, is it Sam Jiza because he says he was the leader of them? Was no, he, he of... was the leader of the Watchers. Oh, okay. He was the leader of the Watchers. It gives their names in Enoch chapter 69, um, all of the different, oh, okay. uh, because it talks about them down in the chapter. You'll see where it starts mentioning uh, these other heads. And uh, so this this is all kind of mentioned together, but see, people always lump all angels in together, but they're different, right? And they all have different orders of importance and dominance. Um, it, like in, in Second Baruch, for instance, it talks about this angel uh, is talking about the lead in the ground, and it comes from a fountain, it says. And there's a predominant angel that stands guard over, or stands watch over this, and so you have this kind of watcher there that stands and he's watching over the lead in the earth. So, you know, think of it like a factory. You got a, a guy in the factory watching over this certain part of the earth, right? This is, this is these, some of these angels have different jobs. The Bible talks about some angels that move luminaries through the earth or, you know, use them as a craft and, and all of these, uh, all of these different assignments that they have. Some are to guard mankind, um, you know, we have the archangels, you have cherubs, you have all kinds of different angelic beings. These were the watchers. Now, you sent me a link, Dan, which I thought was super interesting. Uh, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll let you if you want to. But uh, it was about this guy that it was a video game. And the guy said that we're going to inject our chips into people via, you know, what I don't want to get your channel kicked off for mentioning it, but you know what? I, you, everybody knows what's been going on the agenda for the last few years. Yeah. Um, but that way we can watch the watchers. So they're, they're trying to get inside mankind so they can watch the watchers. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's interesting to say the least. Uh, but yeah. this is the only way to give Satan predominance by, you know, obviously doing that sort of stuff. But man, it's, it's, uh, the agenda here is just un unreal. I don't even know what to say. If you look at Book of Enoch in, in chapter 7, it all confirms all this as well. It says, And the others together with them took into themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And this is this is what happened. And I believe this is what's happening right now because this is the time where defilement is taking place with technologies and all of these different things. A lot of the people that uh, claim to have all these technologies, such as Tesla, um, and pretty much uh, the one, what's his name, Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. um, many mathematicians, many people that have created and, and made huge um, advancements in technology in our earth uh, claim to have gotten their information from uh, the prana or the mahat from, from what they call the ether, right? They're, they're just, they've put themselves into a state of consciousness to receive that. And you can read about that in the Vedic text. The Vedic text is where this is mentioned. Uh, the Vedic text, by the way, uh, which is what the Hindus use, but it's an Aryan text, I believe is very possible that it's actually written by a fallen one himself or mm. somebody that was directly in contact with the fallen one because this is where we get our nuclear weapon. Oppenheimer actually carried this thing around uh, the Vedic text, and he quoted the Vedic text. Uh, he quoted the Bhagavad Gita when he said, "I have become death, the destroyer of worlds." When he it went on the thirty-third parallel or thirty-third uh, parallel in Los Alamos when they exploded the first uh, atomic weapon, um, and so this is the stuff they taught them back then. Okay, and this is talking in terms that were understood, and it says they taught them, they they defiled themselves with them. And they taught them charms, enchantments, cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. They became pregnant, and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. That's like a skyscraper wow. who consumed all of the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against bird, beast, reptiles, fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink their blood. Then the earth laid act accusations against the lawless ones so we have a lot going on here no, they're so teaching they're they're teaching them all these things they're consuming mankind because they're i mean imagine how big well, you got to be you got i mean if you're that big okay for me i need to eat like in order to gain muscle and to strength i have to eat like three thousand calories a day i weigh 240 pounds um imagine something that weighs 
<laughs> 50 tons who knows you know how, oh. how many calories that thing has to consume so they're eating the fire out of mankind so um and that goes right along on. to what you just said too um about and uh about in the let me see get to this oh how they sinned against the birds and beasts and reptiles and we just mentioned yeah. something like that in genesis 6 it is where it backs uh, enoch up and god looked upon the earth and behold it was all it was corrupt all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So if yeah. you go back to Enoch uh, 7 here, it says they sinned against the birds and reptiles and fish, and God knows. And here's the other thing, too, that backs us up. So people think of uh, Greek mythology, right? And uh, to the Greeks, this is not mythology. I mean, this is uh, real stuff to happen, but the thing is they thought they were gods. I mean, that's the only thing they got wrong. But yeah, they were half man, half fish, and all that. This was a genetic myth on this planet. I mean, if you look at every ancient culture, they even show hieroglyphics or whatever of these um, you know, hybrid creatures, which is great with the show today, but hybrid creatures of mankind, you know, half man, half horse, stuff like that. That was real stuff, man. They were genetically uh, disrupting all of mankind and animals, and that's why the Bible says all flesh was corrupt, literally, you know what I mean? And, uh, and that, you know, you, this is just so much information and sources that just backs the Word of God up. Uh, I mean, it's so amazing. You you can't escape it. Of course, you'll never hear any of this in the mainstream churches. Not at all. They I don't know how many times, John, like when we used to go to church, right, that I don't think they even mentioned Genesis 6, to tell you the truth. I've never heard it in the church as my own, you know? I really have any. Well, I mean, they're not going to mention what kind of sermon. You know, their sermons yeah. are about how you can feel good on the mountaintops or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so <laughs> they're not talking about Nephilim for sure. Yeah. That's uh, kind of interesting how the, um, you know, mentions all flesh was corrupt and Gen uh, Enoch 7 kind of, um, you know, explains it, which like they were literally sinning against, which means having sex or whatever the guys knows what they were doing uh, with beast and everything else, man. And uh, that's kind of crazy stuff, man. And then if he, you know, in the sense of well, abortions, it, uh, it does go on to tell in Enoch what they did with the, yeah. the animals and stuff. They made, they uh, actually did manipulation on them and, and um, made hybrids, uh, chimeras. And, um, all of these, it talks about that. And yeah. they were able to take the form of these chimeras, it says, and, and cause men to worship these beasts as gods, right? And uh, this is what it continues to say. So, yeah, they, that's how they sinned against animals. And they probably ate tons of them, too. They end up killing each other, right? That was the curse against them. Uh, in Enoch 8, it talks about all of the different uh, weapons. And, and it says... Um, Azazel taught him to do this and the art of working them, bracelets, ornaments, and the use of antimony, beautifying of the eyelids, all kinds of costly stones and color tinctures. And there arose much godliness, uh, much godlessness, and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Simyaza taught enchantments, root cuttings. Amaros taught the resolving of enchantments, Baraquilt, astrology, Coco Bell, Bell, the constellations, Ezekiel, the knowledge of clouds and the signs of the earth, Shamziel, the signs of the sun, and Surreal, the course of the moon, and the men perished. They cried, and their cry went up to heaven. Um, and that's that's pretty intense stuff. They taught them all kinds of different stuff. It even goes on to talk about how they taught them to, to cut the babies out of the womb, like to abortions. Um, and all of the, and and in the in chapter nine, you see um, the archangels, Michael. Uh, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel, they're going before God and they're, you know, they're like, what is going on here, right? And they looked down, they saw a lot of blood, it says. Um, the earth and the inhabitants were all crying. And it talks about here, it says, Thou seest what Azazel hath done. He had taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. He, so he taught secrets in heaven, which men were already striving to learn, like witchcraft, trying to like figure out what was going on. And Simyaza, to whom thou given authority to bear rule over his associates. And they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and slept with the women, defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women born giants. And it talks, and it talks about this, but this is... Um, This is the history of humanity, right? This is the history of what happened before the flood. Uh, that's why we see all the stuff we do. You talked about in all ancient religions that talks about this stuff. It's because it happened everywhere. The whole earth was full of these things. They filled the earth and they were all over the place. So you see these serpent mounds, you see these pyramids, and you see 
pharaohs and such following suit, you see everything, um, all the signs and symbols point to this happening on every religion, every history of the earth. I mean, what do you, what else can you say? How can you say that that didn't happen? Um, and I know that a lot of you were probably preaching to the choir. You probably believe this is happening. Uh, but you know, the point of the matter is, you know, this is hap this is going to happen again. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see a Pentagon report. Now, well, this is weird, Dan, you sent me an article and I did a show on this early April. And there were articles all over the place. I mean, I'm talking all of the major outlets yep. were covering this. And I talked about it in the show. And I, I don't know what to say, all right? I don't want to sound like a crazy person here. But there's literally, you cannot find this article except for like two or three places. And now all the links that used to have to it, I go to and it's not available. So either, either the Mandela effect's real which I don't believe is possible or they've scrubbed it from the internet. Most of this Pentagon report that was released. Uh, thankfully I did a show back on them, but I hadn't, I, I sat down to look at my computer today. I'm like, where in the world are all these articles? Like how are, how is this possible that they're not like on every single channel anymore? It was talked about on news. I remember watching videos of them talking about it. Right. And here we are, um, at this point, and it's just, yeah. it's unreal to me, but the, the disclosure has been going on for a long time. This was just one of the, um, kind of just, I don't know. It was just so cool to, to see them say it happening, but obviously they either it's been scrubbed from the internet or we're crazy. I don't know. Yeah, man. That booze blow my mind. Cause like, uh, right before the show, uh, I got John, uh, we were getting everything ready. And, um, yeah, we did, again, this was all over the place. So I'm trying to find it. And John's trying to find it. It's like, what the heck? And even where he posted, it's man. not there, you know? My so, mind's blown, man. I'm yeah. serious. Like, I don't get like this very often, but I, I cannot believe it. It's like nowhere. Yeah. How did they do that? And I had, you know, I had this weird experience, Dan, and, and this, hear me go, hear me going crazy again. John's going crazy. But I did a video on Omicron, on the Omicron, uh, the constellations and the stars and mm -hmm. having to do with all of this stuff. And I specifically remember talking about something, even had the slides for it. And I go back to this video cause I re-edit these videos. I get the sound quality good. Cause sometimes when you're live and not everything's perfect, you know, it's just me running the boards there. And so, and I put them on the other, our midnight ride channel when they're all kind of updated and that part was gone. It was like gone from there. Like yeah. I didn't edit it out. It was gone. And I'm I'm like, what in the world is going on here? So the power of censorship is very strong right now, which is tells me that the move's being made. Like there's a move being made because censorship. I mean, I've gotten strikes this year. You've gotten the channel taken down. Uh, John Hall's gotten strike. Everybody we know has gotten strikes or either taken down off the internet. I got delete. I got kicked off Twitter once. Um, you know, it's like. The, you can't speak and even if it's just an opinion like there's something about what we're saying that's dangerous to somebody yeah that's all i gotta say and i, I don't know man I, I call me crazy call me whatever you want but this was all over the news early in april all over the news everybody was talking about it yeah man. and it, um, we found it here lifescience.com is one of you but again you could go anywhere cnn the fox msnbc and uh this is what cbs has got um where is it well, let's just delete it. Crap. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, the lifescience.com says UFOs uh, left radiation burns and unaccounted for pregnancies. So people were getting pregnant. Like, it, you know, just like unaccounted nothing. You know, like, bam, they're pregnant. You know, a new Pentagon report claim. So this was actually all over the mainstream media. All of it. They were talking about, like John said, they had shows about this on the mainstream media and everything. 1,500 pages of UFO Related research was just declassified as part of the FOIA request. And, you know, when Trump said they're going to release all the you know information, which they're dragging their butts doing right now. And, uh, you know, the you know, um, a, uh, intelligence agencies say some of the stuff is a threat against national security. So what are they trying to hide? But anyway, encounters with UFOs have been reportedly left Americans suffering from radiation burns, brain and nervous system damage, and even unaccounted for pregnancy, according to a massive database of the U.S. government reports uh, recently made public through the Freedom of Information Act request. And uh, they go, I guess, uh, the U.S. Department of Defense program that ran from 2007 to 2012. 
despite never being classified or secret, top secret, whatever the case. But yeah, uh, people getting pregnant off um, these things, you know what I mean? And I, this is just goes right a correlation with, you know, because Jesus says, remember this, remember this. And Matthew chapter 24, as the days of Noah, so shall be before the return of the Son of Man. He said, before I come back, he told his uh, apostles, it's going to be like the days of Noah. And that's why the, you know, the, the today's churches, they don't teach you what the days of Noah are like. And that's for a reason to mislead people. Because if people knew what the days of Noah were like, instantly people are like, this is uh, an, you know 6,000 year old agenda that's going on. Or whatever, you know, 4,000 years, or whatever it was. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it's all part of dumbing down society. And uh, this is crazy. We are living in the days of Noah. Again, you know, as Jesus prophesies, it's amazing stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it, it is, you know, it's frightening because we just had something roll out that studies are coming out that are saying, and of course, this is just what I've read. Maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I have nothing. I'm not going to try to get your channel kicked off by saying too much here, Jano. I, I'll do it on my own channel, but I'm not going to do it on somebody else's channel. But there's studies that suggest, I guess that's a light word for it, suggest that DNA changes have been made and are going to continue to be made. And the scriptures say jesus says as it was in the days of noah so shall it be in the coming of the son of man in the days of noah all flesh was corrupted um i'm frightened for the people that don't have their eyes open um yet and i'm praying for them and, I, and this is why we do what we're doing so you know make sure you share this out because we're doing this for a reason because there's going to be a lot of people your family your loved ones your children that are going to fall for this thing and may have already done it. They may have already fallen. I'm not saying that they can't be redeemed. I can't. I'm not going to say that. I don't make that call. That's not me uh, to make that call. But a lot of people are already being fooled and tricked into being corrupted. Uh, if you think of the human body as um, a system, a, a system that works all together, it has its own computing system, it has its own electrical wiring, it has all of that. And somebody introduces something into that that corrupts it, then that's the corruption of the flesh. That's the corruption. Um, I what I think happening is these watchers. But I think they're they're watchers. I think they're either either it's a military program that is working in tandem with the watchers to produce um, nephilim that aren't as big. Because there are there are interesting things that you know this is a whole other show of different kinds of people that are being born with weird traits that you know, weren't being born this way before, but there is definitely something going on with these things. We hear we hear stories thousands and thousands and thousands of stories since the '40s of just you know all of this stuff going on, and I believe that this is going on. They know they figured out a better way um, to do it so that it isn't so obvious and that once the monsters are unleashed it's going to be too late by then um in isaiah in in the i like the septuagint translation of that of that it says giant that i'm bringing forth giants to fulfill my wrath um and that's what revelation describes that's just what that's what all these monsters that come through and and smash down everything that's this is what we're talking about and of course we've been programmed uh to believe that this is going to be like alien stuff going on and uh there's going to be some superheroes and and maybe you're going to be the superhero because they're going to upgrade your to to mix with ai or upgrade your dna to do this but it's all it's all an, it's all false what they're going to do is defile you and make it to where you're no longer human or no longer self savable and you're gonna you know this is what i believe the mark of the beast all of this entails what is the beast right what is the beast a lot of people don't really understand this concept of the beast um tomorrow on the midnight ride we're going to be talking about the mystery of leviathan and behemoth which i think oh, that's um, gonna be awesome yeah it's going to be awesome man I, I i'm looking forward to it but there's um everybody's gonna take it except for the ones that are willing to die not to 
So if you're not willing to die not to, then you're probably going to be one of the people that's deceived. And that's plain with, and um, simple. The the jabs, okay, you can't say too much because of the YouTube, but that's the jabs was the precondition people for that. So uh, basically, when the smart comes, this time you're gonna be killed, plain and simple. At, right now, for a while they were saying you can't go into a restaurant, you can't do this or that, and it was just a preempt to what's to come. And you know, and the Bible says you're gonna be killed, literally, behead for your faith for refusing it. And so the, that 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 was a prelude. Uh, that's nothing compared to what's coming, man. And uh, speaking that with you know the jabs, we're gonna leave it at that. <laughs> um, yeah. Gene therapy, all right. As the days of Noah, when all flesh was corrupt, they're doing it again here, guys. And then here's the other thing, too. They're saying we could clone people. We could, um, and they talk about a hybrid with computers. We could download your consciousness into a computer so you can live forever. They're talking about how, um, <clears throat> you know, they could clone you. They could uh, you do all kinds of crazy sort of stuff. And uh, scientists admit to say, hey, if you want to run fast, we can literally give you the genes of a cheater or something or some kind of animal and uh, integrate in the animals and uh, look at... Uh, it was reported that the UK, they had over 100 fetuses in the lab that were half animal, half humans. Uh, this is singular and grin technology. This is all mainstream stuff, man. Admitting that we could take uh, genes from an animal and human, put it together. And uh, this is exactly what was going on back in those days. And I, I don't know how they did it back then, but it was exactly what was going on then, what's going on now, man. So we are living in those days, as Jesus says. As the days of Noah, and it's so prophetic, it's so amazing. And uh, Matthew 24, it kind of, to me, it kind of correlates with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, just lays it right out, down to the T, man. And uh, it, it is so fascinating, it really is. Then it just uh, opens other doors to other parts of scriptures and everything else. Then uh, again, and if you're, 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 yeah, it's like, well, I, I'm not a Bible follower and uh, it's all garbage. But yet you acknowledge, because um, you hear because of UFOs and aliens, you acknowledge that these things exist. You acknowledge that they were here in the beginning. But you, you know, I mean, you can't correlate to, hey, there is a reason. You know, in, in, uh, the Bible talks about these things. You know what I mean? So uh, you need to acknowledge what these things are. We'll try to explain this for a reason because they are going to come. And we're going to get to that in a, couple, in a little while. Uh, what uh, uh, Revelation chapter 16 talks about these things, man. They are going to come. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to come. The world, here's the other thing, too. I want to disclose um, the United Nations officially appointed a space ambassador to, you know, in charge of green and alien lives. The Vatican's on record. The Pope's on record. Both, you know, the last one and this Pope both said, we will baptize an alien being. You know what I mean? And they got a telescope called Lucifer. It means something, but they says no correlation with Lucifer himself, which is bull. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, they, the world stage is set up for this, man. And they're now releasing the information slowly. And every movie you look is about, uh, you know, Independence Day, uh, superhero movies is about um, getting the world ready. In the Transformer movies, right? The good Transformers come and say, well, we're going to help the world, the world's armies, against the bad guys coming. And when you see Revelation chapter 16, you, uh, you mind if I read that, John? Yeah, please do. Yeah, because um, actually I got the slides for that. So this will correlate with everything we talk about. And uh, this will make sense. If you've seen all these movies, and now um, th this Revelation 16, 12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river Euphrates, and the waters were dried up. So so if you actually look at the news now, I mean, tons of mainstream publications say the Euphrates River is uh, almost dried up completely. That's happening right now. So that the way the kings from the east might be prepared. Now, check this out. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. What, it, what does that look like to you? A reptilian or whatever the case, you know, those are popular aliens. They come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. What does that mean? Who's the dragon? Is Satan. You know, who's the beast? Is the Antichrist. And the false prophet, which me and uh, Dick, David Carrico and all them, they believe it, might, it could be Paul, Pope Francis. But regardless, they're going to reveal to the whole world three unclean spirits that look like frogs. And the Bible says, for they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to all the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to battle that grave uh the god almighty which is armageddon you know what i mean and uh, so what is these superhero movies and all the saying there's uh, like remember the v series in the 1980s and they remade it again in the 90s to say uh, we're here to save you because there's another alien race coming to destroy you so we're on your side to fight the bad guy 
But the you know what they portray as bad guy is God coming the Armageddon. So they're gonna gather all the world's armies together and Armageddon. That's why the Euphrates River is drying up, so they could cross into these. And so when you know they're gonna tell the world this is the bad guys coming to destroy you. We were here since the beginning, which they were. We taught men kind of how to do this and that, which they did. But again, these are evil. They're not from outer space. You know what I mean? So, uh, and that's why the movie The Knowing with Nicolas Cage. Uh, in the movie, it portrayed that, um, again, uh, these were our creators. That's what that New Age believes, that they were our creators. And they took one kid, he, I think he took his son and uh, some other girl, and young kids, and put them at, you know, at the end of the movie, put them into another planet that had the Tree of Life and all this other stuff to mimic the God of Eden. So you have all these New Age agendas going on, you have the occultic agendas going on, then you have the world's view agendas going on, of all these things of what they think they are. Look at um, the History Channel, right? The biggest show in the History Channel now is called Ancient Aliens. It's uh, like four or five years now going on. The biggest shows, and they got all these, I was watching it the other day, I was laughing, because these are supposed to be the top scientists in the world, and uh, experts and everything, even so-called biblical experts. I'm laughing at these people, because uh, it's right in the scripture, you know what I mean? And now these people got all these wild-eyed cockamamian theories, and, uh, you know what I mean? And, uh, and they're getting the world ready, and long story short, they are paving the whole world, and ingesting this into people's minds and brains, and you go into stores, everything's about aliens and movies, so they are conditioning you on a mass scale to get ready for this uh, encounter. The whole world's going to see these things come. It's not going to be a secret no more. They're starting to make themselves known. We'll show you some videos in a little while. Uh, but, man, uh, they're making themselves known. And when they come, they're going to be, in, you know, this fake world peace. And this one world government and everything else, their way and everything else. Then the Antichrist uh, as, as God and everything else. And they're going to tell the world that the bad guy's coming. And that bad guy is not the bad guy. That bad guy's a good guy. And his name is Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. And he's coming with a sword to kick that butt. It's plain and simple. So you're, you're seeing his hand, man. And um, and if you actually want some more information here, um, Alistair Crowley, he said this, okay? Because back then, back in his time... Alistair Crowley, people in the high levels of the call, even in religions, they knew what these things were. This is before the 60s, uh, all the alien stuff started popping off. They said, um, even Alistair Crowley said, today they're called angels and demons. Tomorrow they'll be called something else. And that was Alistair Crowley. And that's one of the beings uh, that manifested in front of him that communicated with Alistair Crowley, and, uh, which would look like a gray or whatever we call it today, but... He knew, he himself knew that they were angels or demons, you know what I mean? So he said in the future they're going to be called something else, and before the aliens, UFOs from Mars, or the Pleiades, or whatever, they're calling them out there, man. So uh, this is uh, crazy stuff, man. So what we're trying to do is just prepare people out there. Don't be deceived. They're going to do so much miracles, wonders, and just the technology is going to explode. You, you're just going to be bizarre, like, wow, you know what I mean? But do not be deceived by this. It's, uh, you know what I mean? Sorry, John. <laughs> it's a, it's no, man, you did. You, it was awesome. I, you know, one thing that I want to say, because you made two really interesting things to me, interesting points here. Uh, one about the Aleister Crowley and also about the spirits that look like frogs. Now, I keep looking at the computer because you're on my computer, but you're <laughs> actually, I, I should be looking over here. Um, the spirits that look like frogs. Now, if they're going to the kings of the earth to deceive them, to me, this is a sign that this is happening right now, because if the governments are releasing reports in regards to these beings, if these, in fact, these frogs, now there's certain kind of frogs that look dead up like like an alien, like what Crowley drew, lamb is the name of, of the uh, alien that Crowley drew that would visit him. Um, if this is true that they are going to the kings of the earth to deceive them in the scriptures, and this is, in fact, are the aliens uh, that people are seeing these grays, then that's going on right now. Because look, all the agendas that have happened in the last few years, this is unprecedented for our country and for really any country to have the whole entire world in on the same thing. Um, I mean, what can you say other than that? But now going to Crowley, I mean, Crowley actually uh, tried to open a portal and, and um, you know, he was a part, of a uh, group of black magicians, a uh, black magician cult, cult called the OTO, uh, which also Jack Parson, uh, who was the ro a rocket scientist that produces produced uh, the rockets for NASA, 
Uh, and it's also L. Ron Hubbard, who was the starter of Scientology. They were a part of his OTO. In fact, Jack Parsons was the leader afterwards. And they did uh, a working, and I can't remember what it's called. I was going to see if I could figure, remember the name. I wanted to say like Alejandro working, something something like this, but you can look it up. But they did a working to where they were opening up a portal. And interestingly enough, most of the UFO sightings, recent ones in the last thousand years, let's say, or 2,000 years maybe even, um, happened started happening around 1940-something. Uh, when he did this working. So did he open up a portal to allow these spirits into the earth? Was he the false prophet? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like well, he opened up a mouth, what kind of mouth, what, you know, why? And then what we have Jack Parson. I don't know. It's just a theory, but it's yeah. interesting to say the least. But um, these, these men that tried to figure out these secrets, these magic secrets, they are tapping into a force to re get these secrets revealed to them as, as mankind increases in technology, the possibilities for these spirits to inhabit and um, basically take control of a lot of the different things take, you know, becomes more and more real until the time when full control is given over the beast, which I think is really, really close to that. I think what we're seeing, and this is just my opinion, but I think what we're seeing happening right now is uh, the revelation uh, the vision that was seen by Daniel and the vision that was seen by John uh, of this beast with a woman riding it. And it culminates to an event that takes place to where this beast throws the whore off its back and burns it. And then power is given unto the beast to rule for a short time. And I think that's what we're witnessing. That's why we see a lot of corruption coming down. Uh, but we see a lot of corruption coming up too because the beast isn't much better than the whore, but the whore gets taken down as well. And so um, this event happens, and of course, uh, Jesus Christ comes down and just wipes them out like they're nothing, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that's what they have to look forward to. Because this is what happens because they're released for a certain period of time for uh, a culmination of everything that takes place. I think in, in Enoch chapter uh, 10, it talks about this, you know, it talks about chaining them down in the earth um, and then letting them loose at a certain time. 70 generations, I believe, was the time period. Um, so 70 generations after that. And, you know, I guess that brings us right to around, you know, today, yeah. um, which is interesting, right? And th this is... The reality, I believe that this is the truth. I really do. Like, I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't. People think, oh, you guys talk about this stuff and and you're just doing it for sensationalism. You're doing it to get listeners, followers. Let me, let me, let me put this into perspective. Look, I could get a lot of other followers doing something completely different than this. Easy, because I could do whatever the heck I wanted. I could say whatever the heck I wanted. What, especially if I was fleshly, I could do all kinds of different things with this, but I choose to talk about these subjects, which, um, because I think they're important and I do, I really do. Because if, if all of mankind is going to be deceived by something and this is part of it, what kind of fool would I be not to say something about it? You know, that's, this is the way I feel about it. And I know that's the way you feel about it too, Dan, this yeah. is not for fame. There's no fame in, you know, being censored all the time. There's no fame nope. in these subjects, especially in the church. And there's no fame in this in the new age. A lot of the new age people don't want anything to do with what I have to say either, or you have to say, uh, because we do talk about Jesus Christ. Now, some of them will believe in Jesus Christ. And I've, and I've seen a lot of the new agers actually uh, follow and, and be like, wow, you know, this is interesting. Like I've never looked at the Bible as this and they've become believers themselves. So nothing against new agers, except for the fact that, uh, they need Jesus Christ. They mm -hmm. need that because that's the only way, only way that says, uh, he says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No man, nobody, not a, not a single soul. You can't transcend without him comes to the father, but through me, right through Jesus. This is what he said. And um, so this is why we talk about this, because we don't want people to be deceived, man. I, that would be that would be horrible. Right. I mean, if you see your children or anybody else, you just got to tell people at least so they can keep it in their head. And know, yeah. like, oh, look at this. This is happening. This is what this is what old John and Dan were talking about the other day. This is going on right now. And I know. So you then you'll make a decision. Are you going to are you going to live uh, and 
perish your soul or are you going to die and live forever, right? Or, you know, God might protect you through the whole thing. Who knows? But either way, you got to be willing to lay down your life. It says in the scripture, Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. The world's going to hate you if you're doing what's the truth is because we're, there's a blinding uh, light over everybody. There's a um, an agenda that's been passed down. We don't even know what our history is. You know, I studied, studied history all through. That was my favorite subject all through school, college, everything. History was awesome. Um, and then come to find out after just continually reading all these years over things that that half of it's probably not even true um, is disturbing to say the least. So there's a lot we don't even know what's going on. So I think the only mark of truth that I believe is even possibly to be the mark of truth is the scriptures. Now, I believe that the Vedic text is the mark of truth for the fallen ones. They've revealed secrets that they shouldn't have revealed in there. And that's why the Bible warns us against doing those things because it can defile us, right? It can cause us to be uh, embedded into these things. Uh, I believe that the men of this earth are necromancers. This is what it's actually teaching is be able to have a familiar spirit that can do these things. Now, a familiar spirit's not like a relative or anything like that. This is a, a entity that is ready to um, give information, right? They, these people have been, that's what Tesla and all these guys were doing. They were inhabiting into this realm and this prana and they were just letting energy flow you know yoga means to yoke uh, and they're yoking themselves with this energy and this entity that's causing this to come to their mind right a lot of these guys i remember one mathematician that i i did a show about this a long time ago and i went to a lot of detail it was really actually a really boring show it's only for people that really want to to read and such uh, and want to see a bunch of information, but it, uh, it was talking about one of the mathematician that basically he, he was like a horrible student and he went and he performed this yoga ritual and all of a sudden, all of these things, all of these formulas were coming to his mind and he just remembered them all, right? You see the same kind of scenario, uh, you know, the devil went down to Georgia, you know, the to Satan coming down to, to tempt a man for his soul. You hear about it in other songs where, um, a guy sells his soul to the devil and, and all these different stories, right? You have this scenario that just keeps taking place. And, you know, what can you say other than um, is the stuff's real, man. You had a scenario, Dan, you, you told me about it. I'm not going to tell everybody about it, but I had a similar scenario. And, you know, I've, I, I, I really believe that Satan himself has visited me and tempted me. And this oh, is, man, you know, this crazy. was years ago. This is years ago, but this happened to me as well. You told me about it. You said you felt prompted to tell me about it. And I think that's why, because this, the same thing happened to me back in 2010. Um, uh, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call this guy, because I, I don't even know which one he was because he had, you know, when he came to visit, he had long blonde hair, real big, you know, strong looking, um, fair skin, just like, you know, big powerful man and uh he tried to give me he told me to give me whatever i wanted whatever i wanted i just had to stop doing christian videos plain and simple wow. and um i turned him down and actually burnt down there's this big truck full of money i burnt the truck and and he screeched and, and flew off and of course this was like i was sitting in my chair a vision you know like i fell asleep vision boom this happened and i remember thinking like was that my was that my buy-in, right? Or was that, was that what he, what was going on? And, and all through this whole entire time, Dan, for the last uh, 10 years, I've been doing this 11 years or however long it's been. And of course, I've not been doing it at the level I'm doing it now for all of these years. I've been doing incrementally until, till now, but there's always been that temptation, right? There's always been, you know, Hey man, you know, come, you can come on, you can, we can, you can be a part of this network, but you can't talk about these things. Or, hey, man, um, you know, you're getting demonetized from YouTube. You know, when I was, um, that was, uh, it, it was doing really well, right? We were doing really, really awesome. And that was like at half the subscribers we have now. And you're getting demonetized so it, because you're talking about these things. Consider deleting these things. And then they, you know, YouTube sent a, um, we had a, um, representative from youtube that would contact us and try to help us get our channel towards what they wanted it and i and i quit calling the guy you know what i mean and then, and then more more problems start happening and then we get demonetized we get strikes uh and not, not only that we you know shadow ban so this is the kind of stuff we have to deal with on a daily basis um 
but the, the censorship's unreal, man. I don't even know where I was going with that uh, at the moment, but, um, yeah, but you well, know, that, this, this is a tough thing. Wednesday, yeah, it was uh, Wednesday night, and uh, I worked third shift, so, uh, no, it was Thursday, I'm sorry, what, what was it? I was trying to remember, I'm sorry, it's like, um, I had to be at home, I, I forgot what it was, a couple of days ago, anyway, <laughs> so uh, I'm taking a nap before, I, it was before the show, I believe, or whatever it was, uh, anyway, I'm taking a nap, and um, in, in my dream, right, this is the dream, um, so I'm laying on the couch, and I had this, uh, you know, this uh, Tupperware container type thing I, you know, drink out of as a cup. So I had it on the, uh, the coffee table, and in the dream, my son's playing a video game and stuff going on, but nobody else hears the season, so what's going on. So this cup, um, I don't know if you ever played with um, dry ice. You, you pour something on dry ice, and it, and it smokes and does all these fancy things. So yeah. um, the cup was doing that. In my mind, is this dry ice? What the heck's going on, right? Then a the cup started actually forming to this, like, bottle and that type thing it was weird man then uh the smoke started coming out of it and all of a sudden the smoke started turning black and all i heard was um this says hey it was a male voice hey and i'm like hello <laughs> and it either said i want you or i'm coming for you and i'm like who are you and it, it said lucifer like that and the smoke was all black and everything and i remember in the dream I uh, touched the smoke and I started rebuking it in the name of Jesus. I said, I belong to Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. And I said, Yeshua, please forgive me for any sins. I'm trying to get right quick with God before, um, you know I mean, uh, getting rid of this uh, high principality, whatever it is, and, uh, or Satan himself, you know. And, uh, and I, you, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ and I use conviction authority. The smoke turned white. And it stopped, and uh, and I get off the couch, and my in my head, I gotta call John Pounders. I gotta call John Pounders. In my head, and I'm still in the dream. Then I woke up, and first thing I did, text John Pounders here, and uh, John Wall, yeah. and all that. But that was insane. Then John, if you want um, your story that relates to that. Yeah, man, it, it relates to that, and that's and I and and Dan, what I what I'm gonna say to you is like you're gonna experience these temptations all throughout. Yep. Uh, the bigger you get, the more the more people that listen to what you're doing, the more lives you change, um, there's going to be temptations. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're talking not only temptations, but threats, yep. you know, death threats consistently continuing. And you're, you've been doing a lot of crazy stuff your whole life. You know, you've been, <laughs> when you worked with Alex Jones, you've been doing all that. So you, uh, of course the, the threats, we have no fear, right. Other than God himself. Yep. Uh, so that's, that's a threat that, you know, you don't have to worry about. It. I believe you're fearless, and and you're not going to worry about that. But um, the th real threat is is flattery. The real threat mm -hmm. comes in um, money. The real threat comes in all of those ways. I mean, I've turned down people that have wanted to give. I'm talking millions, you know, in the end uh, of dollars, but they wanted us to start talking about this, and it was a subject I didn't want to talk about. And so I had to make that choice. That was tough, man. I, I got to say, you know, I, and I don't love money over God, obviously, or I would have taken it, but it was, it's like, man, you know, this money could, I could do this. I could, I could do this. I could do all this, but then I'm compromising. And this has also kept me from, you know, uh, pursuing other things with other people because I didn't want to compromise. I've made it, I've, you know, I know I've made a lot of switches in the people I deal with because I don't want to compromise and I don't want to mislead anybody. I don't want to, I don't want people to think I'm perfect and I know everything. There's, there's no doubt that I don't, but I also don't want to associate myself with people that think they do. And that's where um, I draw the line on a lot of those things. You know, if people think they know everything, then that tells me that they don't know anything. Mm -hmm. That tells me that they, they still haven't even got to the point to they realize that there's no way they can know everything. And um, it also means that they're very deceptive and they're going to lead people astray and they're going to be so because here's what a, here's what leaders do. And most of the time it's subconscious most, and sometimes it's not. But leaders, they are so. I guess uh, what's the word? Um, sure of themselves, they're so sure of themselves that you can't, you know, when people other people are like, you know, what's going on? They gravitate naturally. This is how humans do. They gravitate toward the person that's so sure of themselves. Like this guy, this guy is so sure of himself. He must know what's going on because I sure the heck don't. So I'm going to follow him, right? But here's the problem with that. Most of these people that are so sure of themselves about everything that they talk about, they are just deluded, right? They don't know what the heck they're talking about. Yeah. Um, and that's why the scriptures have to be 
the basis of all truth in this matter too, because you're going to get the fallen one's side of things. And, and I mentioned the Vedic text a lot because I, I think one out of all the texts um, that I've read, wh whether it be the Egyptian book of the dead, all of these different texts. And, and remember, if you ever do read these things, I read it because it's part of my job. This is what I do. Um, this is who I am on this earth. This is what God has given me priesthood over is to, to give out this information uh, so that people can rightly divide the truth from a lie. Um, and, and so I can do it because look, you know, there's so much out there. So it, it, it could be easily deceived this zeitgeist stuff that people always fall for millions of people fell for the zeitgeist stuff. Um, and because they don't know the truth about all that, you know, it, it's been exposed people uh, that actually do know about mythology, uh, you know, exposed that none of this stuff was true. You know, all of the stuff that they decided was false and there's been better translations uh, other than Zechariah Stitchin's translations of these things. But so there's people out there trying to deceive you with that knowledge. So I feel like, well, if they're going to do that, somebody's got to come back with the truth about all this. Somebody has to come back with the truth. And this alien agenda is no different. If they're going to spot off all their nonsense, all of their stuff that's going to deceive you, then we're going to spot off the stuff that's not. And the Bible is clear that there will be deceived. Beans are going to come down. Crazy stuff's going to happen. Flesh is going to be corrupted. A lot of people are going to die. And then, boom, the coming of the Son of Man. And his brightness is so bright that only the righteous will be able to stand before him. Everybody else will flee. The kings of the earth will be embedded in the earth, praying that they're entombed by their own in their own capsule because they're so scared of the of the Son of Man. They're so frightened and they're so ashamed of what they've done. And and they can't even stand before him. But the righteous will stand before him and it says they'll shine. They'll shine like the like the sun, right? Will shine. And they won't be able to do it, man. You know, and that's why um, I can't wait for that day because, you know, all, all the days are going to rise, the good and the bad, and we're all going to stand before judgment. That's scary because we're all human. We've all messed up pretty heavily, right? But those that have had been forgiven by the blood of the Lamb had to be, it had to happen. And, and the Book of Enoch talks about that, uh, Azazel being Azazel, and I think in chapter 10 or 11, it says that all of the sin will be ascribed on Azazel in the Bible. And this is the important thing about the Bible and reading, actually reading the Old Testament and looking at the feasts and, and actually doing the feasts, which is really awesome, by the way. But you, you see these parallels. You wouldn't see them otherwise, right? In the, in the Day of Atonement in the Scripture, for instance, back when the Day of Atonement actually took place in, in Israel and they continued to do it through generation to generation to generation, the scapegoat that they would let loose on this day, they had one goat that they would sacrifice, one that they would let loose, and the scapegoat was called Azazel, and they ascribed all the sin to Azazel and sent him outside the camp. All right, yeah. and this is this is how deeply this is inscribed into the word all throughout every religion in the world, every ancient religion, the most ancient religions. Um, you have the only way to cover a sin a, a misfortune of a, a thing you did that messed something up was by blood because blood had to be poured out a soul for a soul otherwise you die if you mess up you die the bible says it clearly if you sin you die right that's why jesus had to come that's why all of these things happen because when you sin you your soul you die not instantly but your soul and so in order to atone for that soul, blood, a, which is a soul, I did a whole study on this, blood and soul are the same exact thing because life comes from the blood. This mm. is life, nefesh, our soul, our body, everything comes from this. And it has something that has to be drained on the earth for that to happen. And the king of kings fulfilled that for us in order for us to have our soul back because our soul would die because we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God and we all need forgiveness. And so that's why it's so important. And I think that that's why we have to say this and we're going to, we never apologize for saying it. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about that. And we'll even take the risk at looking crazy, but you know what, mm -hmm. we're going to preach the gospel to anybody that will hear it because we believe it's the truth and we will stand and we will, we will live for it or we will die for it. Either one, Amen. whatever it takes. There's no, we don't fear the enemy because you know what? It's temporary. 
it's temporary because what after after happens after this is eternal and we mm -hmm. want the eternal we don't care about the temporary exactly. and i hope that the, i hope that we stay with that conviction both of us and all of the people listening tonight stay with that conviction because that's the only only way you're going to make it through all this man it's the only way and it's you know i don't want to go through it i've got four little small children i've got a wife I've got, you know, I've, I've got people I love in my life. I don't want to see them go through it, but I know that it's very highly possible that it's going to happen in their lifetime or my lifetime, or even maybe after, I don't know, but it, I, whatever's going on right now doesn't seem too promising that it's not that. And of course, I know that every generation, uh, you know, has said that this is the end times, this is the end times, but they've never been at the technology level to be able to do it. Like it's been done now. Hmm. There's never been a worldwide uniting of, of, um, intrusion into genetics. Let's put it that way that there is now. Um, and put some that's, prophecies, man. You know what I mean? And yeah. he has the other thing too, man. Uh, you know, it's our job. I mean, people call you crazy, whatever. And a lot of churches are like, oh, don't don't touch that. But it's our job as watchmen. Uh, God makes that very clear. If we don't want people in a land and they, you know, their blood spilled for it, we're held accountable. At least if we want them. I mean, what you do from there is your thing. But at least we warned you, did our job. And uh, and also Ephesians says to, to expose the deeds of evil. You know what I mean? And uh, so that being said, man, and uh, that's why we're exposing this stuff. And uh here it is. Uh, this was a couple days ago. Uh, the House, which is the um, House of Representatives, uh, they're holding the panel next week. It will hold the first public hearing on UFOs in decades. So they're, they're actually going to hold a hearing in over 50 years. Because back then, there was, uh, in the 1960s, you had uh, uh, the Project Blue Book, uh, which the FBI and government monitored and took all counts of UFOs activities. Then you had the Majestic 12 which was a group of 12 people um, designated by the federal government to look into these um, UFO sightings and everything else. And uh, so this goes so far, man. And uh, you got an ex-Air Force personnel uh, says UFOs deactivated nukes. Yeah, nuclear bombs and nuclear weapons at nuclear silos. And next, uh, and, uh, if you are, John, I got a quick video I want to show people. Yeah, man, please. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so I hope I can see. I'll, I'll have to turn my volume on. I'll watch it too. So it's called, um, it's by uh, Darren McBreen. I played this a while on my new show, but, uh, whoops, hang on a second. Uh, uh, Department of Energy confirms UFOs over nuclear launch sites. So, hang on, here we go. Why have there been so many UFO sightings over our nuclear launch facilities? I mean, that's scary stuff. The Department of Energy, they have confirmed that there has been UFO sightings over every major U.S. nuclear launch site. And not only are these things showing up unannounced, uninvited over restricted airspace, they basically park their ass over the underground nuclear launch facilities, and they're even able to somehow remotely disable the nuclear missiles in the process. So needless to say, it's scaring the hell out of the U.S. military and Congress and the Senate, they want to know what's going on. Author and investigator Robert Hastings has spent more than 40 years locating and interviewing military veterans, missile officers, and others who worked in various parts of the atomic weapons program, more than 150 of them so far. They've all told the same story. That, in fact, UFOs have routinely monitored our nuclear weapons going back decades and on occasion apparently have actually interfered with the functionality of those weapons. He called back five minutes later and this time he was very frightened, very scared, uh, shouting into the phone saying that he saw he was he had his guards uh, there and they were seeing a, uh, a oval shaped orange red object uh, hovering just above the gate of our facility. And he was frightened. He wanted me to tell him what to do. What should he do? And so I said something like, make sure nothing comes in. Use force if necessary. But we had to protect uh, the weapons that we had. So he hung up the phone. And um, I went to tell my commander about this phone call. And as I was speaking to him, the missiles went into a uh, inoperable condition, what we called no-go. They could not be launched, and uh, we lost all 10 of them. Everything went red. All 10 missiles were disabled, every single one of them. 
We don't know who is piloting these craft or why they're poking around, but dozens of witnesses and thousands of pages of documents suggest someone is monitoring our nukes. The Department of Energy admits there's a long history of UFO activity over at nuclear weapons facilities. The I-Team's own FOIA request, filed in 1992, produced a thick stack of documents from the Department of Energy, indicating UFO incidents over every major atomic weapons facility dating to the late 40s. The incident at Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana in 1967 did involve uh, the appearance of a saucer-shaped object above a nu nuclear missile launch site. Seconds later, all 10 of these missiles controlled by this site malfunctioned. This is a clip from a new documentary film, the culmination of Hastings' years of research. The film includes chilling incidents where UFOs have not only infiltrated restricted airspace over nuclear missile bases, but on occasion have disabled ICBMs and put the military on high alert. In one dramatic incident from the film, military photographers using telescopic lenses watched a UFO disable a warhead used in a missile test fired from Vandenberg. I uh, reported this to the command post and they told him the same thing had happened at another site, uh, although it was a week earlier. Uh, but they also lost 10 missiles due to uh, this object. Whoa! So that's a no-go. They call that a no-go when the missiles have been disabled. So can you, can you imagine? I mean, they must be freaking out about it. So yeah, no, it's crazy, man. And uh, we played that a few times on our news show, but it's in the media now. You know what I mean? And uh, though, though, by the way, those that footage of those crafts, that, that was real footage, uh, the real footage of these crafts and everything else. So it wasn't somebody just CGI the thing. That was some real stuff, man. And uh, so yeah, it's basically it's a, it's not a, um you know it's no longer sci-fi. It's no longer uh, a taboo type thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is real stuff, man. And uh, you know it's like. And it's so many, we could go on with story after story of, you know, Russia, they had over Moscow, the airport, they had to shut the airport down for hours because they had a city-sized spacecraft hovering over it. Of course, not one breath of the, it came to the United States news, of course. Um, just stories all over the world uh, of these things, you know, all, all these incidents. And people, like the whole city just about seeing these things and everything else. And of course, yeah. So that you know, it's relates today with the scripture and the occult and everything else because uh, people in the occult, like we said, and uh, back then, and uh, people you know who knew the Bible knew that they they're not aliens from space. So there's an agenda going on, and we're trying to explain what that agenda is. So yeah, as you can see, we showed you tons of information. And uh, before you get John back on real quick, I gotta show you real quick. Uh, this is how serious it is, man. Uh, you got the nine nations, a appointed official space ambassador. That was back in 2011. Yes, her job, okay, was to greet alien life. You know what I mean? And uh, the Pope, Pope Francis says he would definitely baptize aliens if they asked him to. And um, that telescope called Lucifer, they had the University of Arizona build it. And their, their goal was to search for extraterrestrial life. You know what I mean? So somebody claimed to be uh, the king of the Christians, which are not. Uh, should know Don well, especially the Pope, uh, that he claims to be uh, almighty, whatever the case, which is a blasphemy. Uh, he should know what these things are, but yeah, he's promoting them as aliens and everything else. And uh, so, I mean, it's all over the place. And um, this, you know, the, this is um, right from the National Archives about Pro Project Blue Book and everything else. It was an explosion in the 1960s and everything else about what these aliens and all that. So, uh, John, uh, which uh, thoughts on all this, man? This is. Um, yeah, this is just like unreal. It's like right in our faces. Well, I mean, dude, I've 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 know somebody, and I'm not gonna give his name at all because there's only two or three people that were there that would, and they would all know who I was talking about. And and I'm not gonna give the name of the base, but he witnessed a UFO flying in. He was night uh, night security uh, at this major base. And a UFO landed, and the general went out to greet the UFO and meet the UFO. He went on the UFO, and then he came back. And this, he saw this happen, and of course, he hasn't worked for um, them for I think it's been like 15 years. So this happened like 15 years ago. I, I myself have had crazy experiences that I can only, um, all I can say is they were experiences, and and there's nothing that. Um, can lead me to believe that they weren't real. 
Uh, if I didn't have them myself, it would be it would be hard for me to fathom what the heck was going on. Uh, but these crafts, I mean, we see were, um, images of these crafts in a lot of these books that were created during the time of World War II because they had these flying machines that resembled spacecrafts. Um, now, the interesting thing that a lot of people, and this is one of those subjects that it's just people don't know about it, but it's really interesting. But it can also, um, you know, it, it, you don't want to talk about it with friends and family. Let's put it this way. But the truth of truth of the matter, I'm not going to go into too much detail. But the Vedic texts, I know I keep going to the Vedic texts because it's really relevant here, uh, are is an Aryan text. Uh, now, for people that don't know what Aryans are, um, there is this thing called the seven root races. And this is where human anthropology gets its information from. But there's seven root races, and each root race has seven sub races. And there's been several races that come have come before the Aryan race. And this is the time of the Aryan race right now. But you have like the Lemurians, you have the, um, uh, I can't remember the names of all of them. There's one I'm forgetting, but there's also the Atlanteans. And then now you have the age of the Aryan. And the, this is an Aryan text. The Hindus use it, but some of the Hindus can, are considered Aryan. Some of the half of them aren't, but... Uh, pretty much the rest of all of Europe is considered Ar Aryan. Um, and even there's even dark Aryans. It's not just about being white, blonde hair, blue eyed. But they, the reason that they that Hitler was trying to get this blonde hair, blue eyes is because they believed that there was a race living below the earth that was uh, more intellectual, um, more better physique. And they're like, a, they called them the super race or they called them the, the Ubermensch is what they actually called them in Russian, Ubermensch. And that means the better man, the, the, you know, the ideal of the better man. And so they were going towards this so that they can link their DNA with their DNA and they could create this master race. And uh, which is eventually what we're going to see right now. Hitler was um, and, and of course, there's a lot of propaganda about Hitler, whether he was this or that. Who knows? Right. There's no way for me to 100 percent. know. let me adjust this camera a little bit here. There we go. Uh, there's no way for me to 100 percent. know if if all of these stories are legit. I can read the information, the books that were put out by him and Himmler and all these different people. Um, but. The fact remains is they looked for all of these sacred things. They looked for uh, the spear that killed Jesus. You know, they looked for these golden fleeces. They went to the Himalayans and killed a lot of monks and actually went down into the, the caverns. And um, they they did all of these things to search for something. And they ended up settling in Antarctica, which they called um, Swaziland. And this was where they, they, they're still there. If you look on the map, look it up. It's on Antarctica. It's in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And there's a international thing where you, you cannot go there. You can't go there. You can't go and explore there, Dan. I don't care if you want to or not. You're not free. You can't go explore Antarctica. You can't. Even if you had the ice crusher, 10,000 men, and everything you needed to do to live in Antarctica, you cannot go and explore Antarctica. You can only go so far. There's like a little touristy area there and there's people that live in certain spots for that are doing for research but past a certain area you can't go it's like an international treaty that nobody can do it why yeah, in 1959 uh, these other countries came together under the united nations to form this uh place of peace and science they call it mm -hmm. and uh to yeah you know, literally to protect antarctica uh me and david carico uh he was on the show uh, a couple months ago we did a show on this yeah and everything you were just talking about man uh, but yeah, the United Nations. This is one of the most heavily protected uh, places in the world, literally. Like, and the thing is, all these nations all agree. And the thing is that we all have, you know, these different nations have disagreements with this, that, and the other thing. But all of them, for some reason, are all part of this protection plan with the, the United Nations in Antarctica. And also, it's not a coincidence that in, I mean, the United Nations also occupies the top of Mount Hermon, as we read in Genesis, uh, Enoch chapter 6 and 7, you know what I mean? So, so it's not a coincidence that these, um, you know, it, it's amazing, really is. And uh, just the stuff that's down in Antarctica, you know, people, uh, like, forbidden to even go. And if you look on the map, i will show you Antarctica is, like, small. Antarctica is a lot bigger, uh, and w which we believe. We believe in biblical cosmology. We believe Antarctica just... <laughs> Yeah, it's a ice ring around the whole world, whatever the case. But yeah, um, there's just so much stuff, man. Yeah, I, I, it goes on and on, and and 
because once you can believe that you've been lied to, it's really easy mm -hmm. to start saying, well, man, you know, well, how am I going to find out the truth? And, and this is how I do it. And this is really, it really makes so much sense to me. Like, I feel like it's clarifying things a lot for me is by, you know, and, and not ever, not all of you are going to be called to do this. Okay. Let's, let's, let's be straight about this. Most of you guys are not going to sit and do 20 hours of research a week. You're not going to do it unless that's all the time you got to do it. If you got the time to do it, then by all means, but um, you're going to do an exhaustive research on whatever the, whatever the subject is that you're looking at. And then you're going to take that research and you're going to line it up and see what lines up with the Bible. Anything that doesn't line up with the Bible drops over here. Mm -hmm. And if it lines up with the Bible, then that's more than likely the hundred percent truth about what happened. Um, and that's how I've been able to sift true historians from false historians, uh, agenda historians versus regular, just regular historians that are seeing what's going on. They're writing about it. Um, that's how I've been able to cipher out that. And, and of course, you know, some people would say, well, you're ciphering out the right ones. Well, whatever, you know, I believe the Bible. And so I'm going along with the ones that would line up with that. Not saying that they're believers because they're not, I'm talking about people's, their history that they write about, which would differ from the mainstream version of the history from that time lines up with the Bible's version of history that's the one I go for. That's what I mean by that. So I think that that's important to be able to figure that out. Absolutely. I'm just showing some pictures on, uh, yeah, it just shows Hitler and Antarctica and uh, UFOs and everything else. And, uh, yeah, these people are into some serious stuff, man, uh, the Nazis. If anybody's watched the Indiana Jones, uh, I love those movies for some reason. Um, the Last Crusade, I watched that movie probably uh, probably a hundred times at least, and uh, just because of the adventure, you know what I mean. But they were going after the the so you know the Holy Grail. They're going after all these artifacts, literally. The I mean, I'm surprised they didn't go after the Ark yet, whatever the case. Uh, but yeah, the, the, uh, Germany, they were going after everything, you know what I mean. And uh, it always had something to do with spirituality, something to do with uh, that kind of stuff, aliens and all that. And here's the thing too, <clears throat> and uh, for people out there that, that still believe that these aliens are not nothing like that, they're actually uh, helping us and they're actually from other planets, then answer this question, right? Everybody that's claimed uh, um, to be abducted by an alien, right, that knew Christ, okay, when they started uh, rebuking it in the name of Jesus Christ, now mind you, they were paralyzed, they couldn't move, they started rebuking in the name of Jesus Christ, these things up and left them, like zipped out of there. So if if these things are not spiritual entities, then what are they? If, you, if the name of Jesus Christ drives them away, that's got to tell you something. Then if you know that movie they had, they filmed in Nome, Alaska. I think the, um, something encounters, whatever. And uh, if you notice, uh, the men were being tortured in their sleep. and had something to do with aliens. I forgot the name of the movie. Um, it was filmed in Nome, Alaska. It was kind of a... Uh, like real stories in the movie, you know what I mean? But if you notice, right, uh, there was a screech owl um, in, you know, it was showing demons as well. And the screech owl represents Lilith, and she was uh, known to torture men in their sleep and cause sleep paralysis and everything else. But there's always a connection, a correlation between demons and U uh, UFOs all of the time. Even in the cult, as we explained with Alistair Crowley, but in that movie, uh, the, uh, I forget, it's right, right off the tip of my tongue. I forgot the name of the movie, but... um. Uh, again, it was filmed in Nome, Alaska. It was like about a decade ago that this movie came out. And um, yeah, but it was showing a correlation between uh, these demonic, unclean spirits and, uh, you know, these UFOs encounters. There's always a correlation. And the name of Jesus drives them both away. So that's got to tell you something that, yeah, there's a spiritual significance of this thing here. And the other thing, too, is um, what gets, uh, I forgot where in the Bible where Jesus talks about, uh, it sounds like to me he's talking about the nuclear bomb where it would dissolve the eyeballs out of your sockets and all that. And uh, just like, and I think, um, and to me, like, especially with the nuclear silos, uh, I used to listen to Coast to Coast Radio all the time, and they had people on the, you know, the show, as they said, they were a former government, a military, whatever the case, and they said that they shut the nuclear silos down, and because the United States actually attempted to shoot a nuclear bomb off at the time, an attempt to blame Iran or something, and go, plus to go to martial law. How true that is, don't know, uh, but that would make sense, and they said the aliens, the UFOs, would stop that from happening, even if it shot off, they would disable the bomb in the middle of the year. And the thing is, I you know, could you know the Lord use some of these things for His purposes? I, I believe so because, like, the thing is, who knows how many times we and many other countries try to launch a nuclear bomb off to destroy another country, right? 
And if it doesn't fit God's plan and God's purpose, uh, he's going to intervene with that, whether regardless of if he uses an alien UFO or just divine intervention. But I truly believe um, something similar has probably happened many times that, you know, because Jesus says uh, in, in the end times, so unless I intervene, no flesh will be left alive. And I think he's done that several times. God throwing the monkey wrench in the works millions of times to hold the New World Order back until it, he allows them on his time. And, you know, and even that's going to be a short time, as uh, Lord and Savior says. But, um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that, brother? I mean, like, uh, you think that, well, you know, these things did happen and uh, God intervened or allowed these, ex you know, the, these so-called aliens to do that? You know, I don't know for sure. Um, I don't know for sure, Dan. I really don't, yeah. man. I wish I could have had a better answer. But um, what you did touch on something, though, that I think really we have to talk about in the show that way that just for people that may be dealing with this type of encounter or, uh, you know, sleep paralysis where they're, you know, being visited or whatever uh, you you said that they're being left. They leave in the name of Jesus. Now, I interviewed a guy named Joseph Jordan about seven or eight years ago. I think it was in 2015, 2016. And he i've interviewed him a couple of times but he was a one of the investigators for mufon and so he went all over the world to investigate ufo sightings also uh to investigate um you know people that have been abducted or had different different kinds of levels of encounters uh he documented this is before he's a believer he documented thousands of cases that people's testimonies would say that they uh called out to jesus and these entities left they were gone like it, this has happened and it started he's like i didn't he didn't know what to do with the information he told some other investigators like yeah we usually don't do too much with that whatever you know what i mean so this this is information he became a believer and now he get he he was i don't know when the last time he's been interviewed is it may be recently it may have been uh years ago but uh, he used to get out and talk about these things quite a bit. And I think um, it was really interesting, but that happens. And that's important to know that, you know, I had an experience myself after I became a believer that I thought I, I didn't know what was going on. I felt like I was going to, they were going to try to abduct me, but I used the name of Jesus and it was gone. I actually used the name Yeshua because that's the Hebrew name. That's the name that I knew back then. That's the name that I believed to be Jesus's name, which I believe that they're both interchangeable and he knows who you're talking about when you say it. So whichever one you're comfortable with, I'm f I don't care. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. my job. It's not my job to care about that about you. If you if you got an intimate, uh, you know the you know, the name that you call him that you know him by, and he uh, he, he hears you. You know, it's kind of like I got a little little nieces and nephews. They call me different names, right? They call me JoJo. And, and I'm, am I going to say that's not my name, child? how dare you call me by that name? You know, like, you know, I, you're going to be like, Oh, what's up? You know? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? You know, that's, that's God's like a father, right? Um, we can look to him like that, but he's also a stern, a stern and he does, uh, is just so, um, but this is, this is the reality that we live in. We have to know that. So I, I just wanted to say that because I thought if we don't say that, then I think that somebody might not hear it that needs to hear that if they ever have that type of happening, because it can happen. Trust me, hmm. it can happen. Even if you're a believer, I was a strong believer at the time. I had been casting out demons for real, like for real life stuff. I'm not talking about this weirdo that's on TV making these demons talk to him. Hey, tell me, <laughs> Satan, you know what I mean? Like, Nothing like that. I mean, I'm talking about like real freaking scenarios where these people had demons and they were cast out. And so I was battling spiritually stuff all the time when I first became a believer. Like God just put me in all of these different places to be there to, to minister to different people. Uh, I met this girl that was, uh, I didn't know this beforehand, but she was getting ready to go get an abortion. Uh, I walked into this church in Boonville after, uh, and, and this is like a town that was, uh, you know, 45 minutes from my home, but I was happened to be working there that day. I saw this dude on the road who had all, he was wearing all red. He go uh, and he had a long, big cross, a huge cross. And he was like sitting there kneeling with it face covered. So I guess he didn't want, you know, want people to see his face because he wanted to focus on what was going on. And we stopped because we were like, what the heck? And uh, we talked to him and he said, Hey, I'm going to be, preaching a revival right here at this church over here. And so we went to it 
I walk in and this girl turns after, there's a lot of people praying for her and she turns and she goes, I've been waiting for you. And she says in this deep raspy, you know, kind of freaky voice, which I thought was crazy. And we went over there, cast the, cast the demon out, the demon left and the girl started weeping and crying. And she started telling her story about she came in there because she was considering getting an abortion and then uh, just crazy situations. Just that's just one of them. But there's just you know they they happened a lot at the beginning. But there was also uh, the enemy trying to get me, I believe, and trying to kill me, possibly you know in my sleep or or you know just literally crazy stuff was happening where I would even had um, these entities behind me. I couldn't even look back, you know, um, to see them. But they had like you know zap like what I believed, and this is you know obviously a spiritual attack, but. It, I felt like a zap at the base of my, um, or at the base of my skull and at the top of my spine there. And, and like, I was like, felt like something was pushing down on my chest and I, I got out, you know, I, I actually left my body for a minute, like I was dying. And then I slammed back down in my body, rolled over, went to the other room. These entities were behind me telling me to come, asking me to come with them. And I said, I'm not going with you. And they left. Yeah. And so this is, this is stuff that can happen. So knowing that you need to call on the name that is above all names, the Bible says he's the name above all names and the demons shudder at the name. They shudder at him. They begged him when he saw, they saw the man in Gadara, they begged him not to cast him to the pit. They begged him, they begged him to cast him into the swine and they went into the swine. The swine went off the side of the mountain and so that they can inhabit other areas but this is this is the name that is a tool and, and it's it's not just the name that's like a magic magic word that's going to do this for you this is the belief that this name will save you see mm -hmm. these people they may not have even been a full believers at the time but when they said his name they believed that that was going to save them and guess what it did um people don't have a lot of faith anymore people don't there's not a lot of miracles performed in in america especially or 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 any country that's not a third world country third world countries it happens a lot because the faith is so strong they literally have to have faith uh to make it down the road without getting shot in the head they have to have faith to have food on their table they have to have faith for all of this america's taken the place they become the big daddy yep. of of the world they're trying to supply all the food for all the world you got somebody bill gates who's trying to control all of the food for the whole entire world um but God says he'll supply our needs. He'll supply our health. He'll supply all these things. And so a lot of people don't have faith in that. That's why they run. They ran to the clinics, right? They ran, you know, wherever it was being given. They ran there scared for their lives because they're, they were, they feared their, for their life. The Bible says those that, that seek to save their life will lose it. And, um, the key is, the key is, um, being, in him and in his his protection because that's the only thing that's going to help us right and having the holy spirit so the holy spirit can guide us to do what's right guide us in the right situations in general like you know you, you're always at an option to make choices like tonight i could have chose not to come on the show i could have been like dan i'm tired i just just got done grappling i just got done at the gym i've been there for hours i've been outside i could have like i felt like that actually about an hour before the show and I was like, I can't do it. I was like, I got to do this. I, you know, this is, I, I made my, made my commitment and I'm so glad that I did now, you know, like now I'm like, man, I'm, I really feel like somebody hearing this tonight needed to hear this and they needed mm -hmm. to hear that God loves them. They needed to hear that God wants to protect them. God wants to save them. He wants to give them peace and he wants to redeem them and he wants to give them eternal life. And so I'm so glad that I had the opportunity tonight, Dan, um, I, that's really all I have to say on the subject, my brother. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I know you're tired, but you want to go on for phone calls? If not, I understand. Yeah, um, no, I will. I'll do, I'll do some phone calls. Let's do it. All right. So, um, what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to put the number in the chat. It's uh five, one, two, five, four, seven, 1776. So I know there's a 30 second delay. So guys, that movie I was talking about is called the fourth kind. 
and it was filmed in Nome, Alaska, and uh, it was associated with demonic and alien stuff. I want to point this out real quick because this gave me like a uh, flashback, man. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I'm going to leave this short here. Um, what I thought was, because I was fascinated with the UFOs and uh, all kinds of spirituality stuff. So um, what I thought was an alien at my window, okay, not even joking, it flashed something just like this in my face. I, I remember that. And this it just gave me like a PTSD, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, but it was like a bluish color. Shined it in my, a light blue, shined in my face, and I passed out. And ever since I woke, when I woke up, massive sleep paralysis. I mean, talk about demonic spirits sitting on my chest, shaking me off the bed, uh, all kinds of nutty stuff, man. And uh, having premonitions, be able to uh, once in a while move stuff with my mind. It was out of control, man. Out of control, and these things were like really suffocating me at times, and uh, it was out of control. And uh, for years on end, and I tried everything to get rid of it. And one day when I started you know, learning more about Jesus with severe conviction authority. Instantly, boom, in the name of Jesus, I confronted this entity, whatever it was, it was all black, you know what I mean? And uh, it, it left. And for the first time in uh, over 10 years, I was able to sleep peacefully without getting woken up. And um, you know, it was great. And once in a while, I started coming back again because demons don't like, to, Satan doesn't like to lose their people. You know what I mean? So they think they own you. So they try coming back once in a while, and they became that much more easier to get rid of it. And then each time your faith gets bigger and bigger, and your, your attribute points, if you want to put it that way, and your faith gets bigger. Now, because now you have the confidence and a severe conviction, these things come back. Yeah, come on, come on back. Come on back. You get that attitude. Like, yeah, come back and see what happens to you, demon. You know what I mean? And uh, at first, you're scared to death because you got this thing sitting on your chest. You got things pulling you off the bed, shaking in the bed, uh, things flying around the room, uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. I got to uh, talk to uh, should do a whole um, show on that, uh, about these things here. But that's what, this one here, that's what happened to me almost. And uh, But it was nuts, man. And about, the, yeah, this movie was uh, about stuff like that. Uh, people wow. with sleep paralysis, and it's all related, every bit of it. And, um, and this uh, demonic, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, <clears throat> Uh, alien abduction, you know what I mean? It's literally uh, these things, because they experiment back then, an experiment that's why sometimes they take uh, fluids from people. Uh, they take, um, you know, they find cows and the animals on the field, tons of them, with their guts uh, just removed because they're, they're genetically doing whatever God knows with these uh, people and animals and everything else. So they're out there experimenting with this, this stuff. You know what I mean? People getting pregnant with these things. Then the babies disappear after a certain trimester. They're gone, completely gone out of the stomach. And, you know what I mean? They're breathing these things. You know what I mean? And uh, it's crazy. And uh, the X-Files, uh, I know it's sci-fi or whatever, but the one of the last episodes of X-Files, they had a birthing center. Uh, they went into a birthing center, underground military installation. They were actually birthing, breathing um, these, you know, what, what you want to call your aliens or UFOs. Uh, these aliens, I'm sorry. And uh, so it's crazy stuff, man. And um, the thing is, uh, every all sci-fi is based off of some reality or some truth. You know what I mean? So, of course, they put a little dramatized to it, movies and everything else. But this is real stuff. And here's the other thing, too. Reality is more stranger than fiction. Truth is stranger than fiction. So... And um, if anybody wants to give us a call, the numbers, let me put up on the screen here, too. So Why you out. put that number on the screen, why you put that number on the screen, man, the, you know, those situations you described is exactly how it is, you know, the, the light, because these beans behind me that were sitting behind me, they were so bright like that. Yep. Um, they were so bright that I couldn't really turn around and look at them. Um, for one, I did, I was like, I was like, you know, I don't want to go with them. You know, I felt like uh, I shouldn't go with them. You know, for I'm sorry, I'm looking at you over here, but you're over here. I, I <laughs> felt like I felt like they were just kind of just dominant. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't. I don't know how to explain it. But as yeah. soon as I just basically told them I wasn't going, uh, and you know that I don't have to go with them, they they knew. But this is interesting because the you know that didn't happen to me all over and over again. It happened to me a lot, um, you know, at one, when I was, before I was a believer, I had sleep paralysis a lot. I didn't even really know what it was. I thought, it, you know, in my mind, I was just, oh, it's just a medical thing or whatever, you know, and whatever. And so, but after I became a believer, uh, the events manifested at a higher level. Um, and it only happened one time, like one time, several times in one night, but one night is when it actually took place. And when that happened, um, 
it was at somebody else's house. It wasn't even at my house. It was at somebody else's house that had been experiencing things. It was a family member that had been experiencing a spirit. Uh, one, my aunt, she said a, a giant was outside of her house, banging on the side of her house, saying it wanted to kill her. Um, Hope we got a call another coming. sibling in another house on the uh, property said that there was a giant one time, one time, uh, one time, literally one time, sitting one night, on this chair. And then one of the children said happened. the same thing, sitting on this chair rocking. All these crazy stuff they were saying. So that night, that's when, uh, when I was staying there because it was a family member's house. That happened. We cleansed the house afterwards. That hasn't happened there since, but that's uh, it's crazy. Yeah. And caller, you're on here. Uh, what's your name? I did. I got through. This is Jenny Coffee. Hey, Jenny. How are you? Great. Jenny Coffee. How are what's you, up? Dan? God bless you. God bless you too. Sorry, I didn't answer the first time. I had my um, the audio mixed up here. <laughs> Okay, well, I called again. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. And uh, so, yeah, man. Great uh, work you guys are doing. Thank you. I, I, ho I hope you're patient with me. I really cl uh, clutter up your uh, chat chat room a lot. But oh, that's all right. Go for it. I have a lot to say. <laughs> this was something, I, and I guess the reason I called, I did want to say that this was something that God put in my spirit in an experience that I had. And he showed me it would come to this, and he showed me headsets that they would put on our heads. He showed me satellites and lasers coming from beyond the craft. And he let me know that it was men that gave that to them, and it was men doing it. And so uh, so I'm a pretty determined little brat, a little hillbilly, but yeehaw. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I believe that there's military programs that do this stuff on, and really big time. But I think uh, as as the scripture in Revelation said that there there's evil spirits that are associated with this. And so they can make it look like oh, whatever. Absolutely. I mean, there's a story of a guy that convinced this family that uh, they were being abducted and all of this. And he was giving them LSD and, and making had these speakers and had all this crazy stuff. And their whole family was convinced of it took pictures of them in compromising situations, doing crazy stuff that they, you know, all of this. And then, so this is just a guy doing this, right? So imagine what the military is doing to people. So, I mean, I believe right. that that for sure right. is part and of it. And then you've got the secret society links and, and I have a history of, of uh, high positions in, in my family, in the military with my great uncles, not just my uncle. I was typing, I had shared with the chat room when this happened, I was abducted when I was young and, uh, uh, my memory, it was preschool and, uh, we, we'd never heard of anything like that. You know, you just, you just didn't hear it. And, um, I didn't know what they were. And it started out with night terrors, every kind of monster I had seen on Scooby-Doo and I'd turn and face them and dissolve them. And then it would get down to that gray. And I would just say, what are you? And why I couldn't get it to go away until it, it didn't exist. And because of Jesus, <laughs> it didn't have a right. <laughs> and yeah. when I would argue with it what, that way, um, I had gotten blue light came through the windows, just the whole package like they put on TV these days. And my feet, I, I lifted up out of the bed. My feet turned around and went in front of me and then down beside the bed and through the windows. And... Uh, when I argued with them that they couldn't do it, it pulled me out of it, and I had to go to that bigger-looking one, you know. I, they, I, I don't know what to call it because there, those names weren't there then, but it was a bigger one. It was different than the grays, and he would argue with me. Why didn't I believe in that, you know? I was allowed to watch something or I'd seen advertisements, and everybody knew about vampires. Surely I had to believe they were real and wolfmen. Now, you have to believe they're real. They're in the movies. They're real people. They're not just cartoons. And and that stopping to argue and debate, you know, weakened my faith. And they came for quite a few, probably a few weeks, and they would put, to, put, put something in my leg. And they told me I wasn't going to remember it. And I told them, I said, oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and I threw those blankets off, and sure enough, I squeezed, and it came out. The second night, it went deeper, and in a different spot, I squeezed, and something came out. And the third night, it went so deep, it made me sick when they put it in. It made me sick to try to get it out. But, uh, yeah, I've, um, 
my uncle had gone uh, uh, with a friend. They were drinking, and he was active military and took a job working civilian to fly to these secret places and work on uh, the uh, the oil lines. He did the, the jets that pump that. And I was military myself. I was a jet engine mechanic myself. I worked the flight line. But... Um, he was drinking as he was it was right during the time he changed the jobs and uh, our phones just started ringing off the hook aunts all his sisters and my granny colin that in the most responsible uncle i had is losing his mind he's calling down here wants to come and hide in the attic because they're after him and gonna kill him Wow. <laughs> that friend of his had taken him uh, to, and, you know, later when I grew up, they said there was a bunker underneath the barracks. And he said he had gone under the barracks and seen something. And he knew they got in his head, and he knew they would kill him. And he wanted to hide out. And I can remember, you know, being real young and the middle kid kind of wondering, because I loved my uncle, you know, uh, come in and get a drink and kind of slowly walk. By, you know, and your eyes don't come off of them so you can see what they say, you know. And uh, he was he was really tore up. But then uh, uh, my dad had some strange things go on and started uh, shooting out the windows and then the secret society stuff. And he had some mind-altering things go on there that probably shouldn't talk about. But, uh, uh yeah, this has kind of been a, a thing I have wanted to get to the bottom of ever since I told them they were wrong. And I'll I'll keep telling them that because they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have seen it in, in uh, like you said, there's been abuses. There's been uh, um, a drug clan uh, that I was involved in. It I don't know. You know, I think maybe that... Uh, when God exposes you and you know that, that uh, maybe maybe that happens a little bit more to you because, because you can deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, but we ought to... I just wanted to say thank you. You're and welcome. be patient with me. I, no, I don't that, that, that was... Your show. Absolutely, and I appreciate your call. Uh, yeah, and um, a lot of people reported, I think we had Emily on when she was on the show, talking about the dumbs, the deep underground military bases, and they have these hybrids, uh, you know, aliens, whatever you want to call them, uh, down in these things, man. And, uh, you know, the stories we, you hear from all these other people who grew up in military installations and all that, and uh, they were victims of SRA, victims of, uh, the, you know, what these things would do and rituals yeah. and everything else. Yeah, uh, uh, well, I will say this, that I have learned about the neurotechnology that they use, yep. that it really works. And uh, I mean, on the bi- biologically, it works on strongholds. Um, wow. I've looked at all this. Oh, can you not hear me? I hear you. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, that those sort of things, you know, and and these people involved in this, they want to remind you of that trauma. That's what it's all about. And and you know, the more forgiving you are, the more they're going to come at you mm-hmm. to try to remind you. <laughs> And uh, even here lately, I mean, it, since just before COVID, uh, I think everybody had some really weird Christmases where everybody was really <laughs> complained and kind of disowned was yeah. going around an awful lot. And my situation was no different. That's what Christmas was about. You know, when you belong to those kind of clubs. Yep. But, you know, I love my family. And, yeah. and someday and hopefully they'll come out of it. But the more you're forgiving, the more they have to do the most unforgivable. Yeah. And I've been penniless since just before COVID, but uh, I got me a phone. I learned how to text and type, and I looked up these vaccines, and I get it straight from, you know, Google Scholar, and I, I get it from the journals. So I'm not going. I'm not going to get on there and lead your people astray. You all are doing great. Yeah, thank I'm so you so lucky much. I found you. And I'm going to let you all go now. I just want to say thank you. God bless you and love you. And uh, Shabbat Shalom to you, and uh, God bless you as well. Thank you Bye for the call. <laughs> Good night. Good night. So, guys, anybody else wants to call in? We'll take uh, one or two more calls, and um, because me and John both, uh, we've been uh, hitting the gym hard, man, and uh, 
you know, try to get in shape. And, uh, you know, because both of us, me and John both got sick uh, about a month apart, whatever. And we've been hitting back in the gym again, just try to build ourselves back up again. So it's been a long week, man. I went to the gym today and I had, like, it was a struggle. It really was because my yeah. whole body's just like tanked. You know what I mean? And oh, same thing with John today, man. <laughs> I know, I know how that feels, man. It's, you know, basically my life consists of now you see TV stuff and mixed martial arts and or jujitsu most importantly right now and um research you know uh, trying to do about 20 hours worth of research a week um that's what my life consists of but yeah i mean I, the pain you're all we're always in pain there's no there's no time not to be in pain Hold that's on, for sure. yeah oh i'm sorry uh yeah hey, call around you on the what's your name Hey, Dan Bedondi, it's Anne Marie Winburn. Hi, John Pounders. Hey, Anne Marie. How hello. You doing? I can't. I can't hear her, Dan. But I, I was saying hello. I couldn't really hear the name. Anne Marie. Winburn. How are you doing? It's Anne Marie okay, Winburn. How are you guys doing? Okay, I can hear you now, Anne Marie. Hello, Anne Marie. Hey, John. Um, it's three o'clock here. That's probably why, because everybody's asleep. <laughs> I wanted to share a quick experience. I've known Dan for quite a while. Um, this was a, a long time ago when I believed in the, um, pre-trib rapture, waiting for that rapture bus. And well, it was right around the year before the great American eclipse. And I was scared because I knew my walk with the Lord was not correct. I knew there were things that needed to be routed out. And so I went around anointed my house. I had a baby puppy. And I had an older puppy, the mommy, Black Labs. You know how territorial and how they hear. Their hearing is very astute. I remember it was around 3 o'clock in the morning. It was very dark here in the mountains. And I had anointed all, all the rooms and all the windows in the house in the name of Jesus. Still trying to walk out my walk. Because like you said, John... None of us are perfect. None of us know it all. But I was still trying to be obedient and faithful and walk my walk out. Well, I was in probably what you're going to be in tonight. Just, you know, when you hit that bed, you're just out in deep REM sleep. And all I heard was what I thought was thousands of helicopters. And I sat up in the bed straight. My husband was snoring. Both puppies were snoring. And they were just out like a light. And I looked up into my right cathedral ceiling, not to boast, but we do have high ceilings. It's just no big deal. And a light came through. It was an orphana. Now that I follow David Carico and you guys, it was an orphana. It came through and it shone a light right on my forehead. And it scooted like nothing scooted before and I stayed seated up in the bed going what in the world was that and how come my husband and my family couldn't have heard that it was very very odd and I questioned that for the longest time I wasn't scared I just said that's really weird that came through a a house a cathedral ceiling it shone right on my forehead like a spotlight and I, so I called my prayer partner the next day. Bottom line is that I'm like, was that the Lord opening my mind? Was that something demonic? Was that something? My husband says, I think it was protection. I don't know. And then now that I've been following um, the doctrine of Christ, I realized that it was an orphana. I wasn't scared. I wasn't frightened. But I have also had the sleep paralysis. I have also had entities showing up in my room. Well, you sound like I've me. Also, uh, the same thing happened to me. Uh, that That's a, a word for word. That's crazy. Wow. Are you well, still having it, Emily? No. No, Anne-Marie. Okay. Anne-Marie. I'm sorry. You're right. Anne-Marie. Anne -Marie. That's okay. That's okay, John. <laughs> J-O-N, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, no, sir. I'm not. And um, the thing that got me was how come nobody else heard that and it was so very loud 
And all I can think of was maybe it was a rush of mighty angel wings. That's the only thing that I can think of as a human being. I don't know. But there was no helicopters. There was no sirens. We lived deep in the country in Tennessee. There was no nothing. And I checked everything. And um, the sleep paralysis, I have even had entities grab me and I'll share one more thing since nobody's calling in. Dan, let me know if somebody calls and I'll let you go. Sure. I, my brother, my older brother passed away three years ago, this 21st of May. My twin just recently passed away a few months ago. When I went to my brother's memorial, not his service, memorial, oh my goodness. There was a woman trying to orchestrate the funeral, and I was going to go up to, and I could be in error, please correct me. I was going to bind any remaining demons to my brother who was an alcoholic, and I witnessed to him and had to go into the harsh rebuke with him. Didn't your pastor tell you about 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 12? No drunkard, no adulterer, no fornication, on and on and on with that scripture. We'll make it into heaven. And he, he started crying, no blasphemer. And that was his favorite word was to blaspheme God. Well, I got halfway up there and a principality jumped on me and threw me about 30 feet. Yeah. But then I finally got collected. I don't remember any of it. People just said, you went flying. I went up there and unfortunately, and I'll be honest, my brother used to call me the N-word all the time. And I asked the Lord all the time, why did you turn this very good-looking man into a very skinny, withdrawn black person, indigo black. He says, because he called you the N-word. And that was my judgment on him. Now, he did repent two days before he died. But God turned him black. But they said, we saw something pick you up and throw you. Is it biblically correct? You don't touch a dead body, but you bind the demons to that ancestry line so they don't go down to the next generation. Uh, so about so that. Can, I, can I just say something on this? So um, it's not considered wrong to touch a body when they die. It's considered unclean, okay? And, and so just so you guys know, because a lot of people uh, wonder about that, like how can you how can people touch dead bodies, whatever. It's not considered wrong. If you're in a Nazarite vow, you're not supposed to do it for sure. Or if you're entering the temple, according to Leviticus, you're not supposed to touch a dead body, but you would be clean by taking uh, what they call a mikvah, a bath, uh, what we call baptism um, the next day, right? And so, but okay. what, you're, what you're talking about is, is a generational demon. And yes, 100%, um, this is where we get the term, uh, have you ever heard of the term genie, which was, is the um, Muslim, the jinn, um, the, yeah. the right? The jinn, this is where they get the genie. And this is where genealogy comes from. This is where uh, generational comes from, from this word. And uh, we did a show, me and David did a show called um, the Nec Necromancer, Necromancer Priests of Saturn. And in that show, we talked about the story of Saul. David was talking about the story of Saul, uh, where he went to visit the lady at Windor who had a familiar spirit. A lot of people call her a witch, but she wasn't a witch. She was actually a necromancer, a Saturn, Saturn necromancer, right? She was a necromancer that had a familiar spirit. And when you look at that term familiar spirit, it's uh, a spirit that kind of goes through a family, right? Family lineage. And that's why sometimes they can act as this person or that person. But yes, I believe that they do. And this is what I believe happened in the house that I was at because my grandfather had just died. My grandfather uh, was, from what I know, was not a believer. Um, uh, from what I understood about my grandpa, you know, if the stories I heard are to be true, he was pretty much, everybody was frightened of him. Um, he was a pig farmer. He, he at one time he had cattle and uh you know he would pay off judges and stuff for my uncle and all of these different things people were scared of the man and uh, who knows what all happened right with him but when he passed this is when the demons inhabited this area uh, and everybody it made themselves known to everybody that lived in that lived in that property and uh yes 
I did not I touch his body. I just, I just stood there with my shoes off, and I said, Father, I bind all the demons to this body that will come down our ancestral line because there was a lot of alcoholism. I don't drink. I can't. I, I just can't. I'm allergic to it. I don't drink. So I bound the demonic entity I did not touch. So thank you for clarifying that it's unclean and that and what you explained so beautifully. But um, there was resistance because I was that was hidden from me that he was sick. When I found out, they called me a day before or two days before he died and said, can you come? And I said, no, the Holy Spirit wants me to stay here and intercede for him. So I I interceded for him and I fasted and prayed for him that he would repent. I found out later that he did repent. But I always asked the Lord, Lord, why did you turn him into go black? And he said, because of the nickname he named you. And that really... That really took me onto a serious side of the father of what your words have meaning when he would call me and go, Hey, what's up, my in? And I would go, <laughs> Right, I'm not, I'm your sister. And he was just a hardcore, you know, second mil- uh, Marine, I'm in the Army. And so I just kind of blew it off. But once the father showed me that, that was strange. That night, I did have, not sleep paralysis, but I had something coming to me, shaking me in my bed, literally. Like the old-time quarter beds that you could put a quarter in a bed, the bed was shaking. And my husband noticed it, and we had the puppies, and they were like, what's going on? I said, I rebuke you in the name of the living Christ and the blood of Jesus be against you. Leave us alone. And my husband noticed on the way out, and I'll end with this on the checkout. He goes, wow, you had a really bad nightmare last night. I said, no, I had a visitation last night. I said, don't worry about it. And he says, you think that has anything to do with the room next door? I said, what do you mean? He says, come here, let me show you. The room next door was called 666. We were in room 667. And yeah, like, no, wow. no, I think that's that's similar. Like I said, to what Dan experienced and similar to what I experienced. This was right after a death of a man that probably had many of demons. I mean, I didn't realize I had demons before I became or before I became a believer. I just thought I was, you know, going a little crazy. You know, I, I thought all the bad stuff that I was doing, trying to live a double life, was, um, you know, taking its toll on me. Uh, but little to find out, I was actually demon possessed. I remember. After I I believed in Jesus, I was like, man, I believe in Jesus. I'm going to try to do. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, God, tell me what to do. You know, I don't even know if the Bible's true. Tell me something. And I remember, you know, just having this breaking point where I forgave everybody that had hurt me in my life, everybody. And I had no ill will, no ill intentions towards anybody else. And, and it was a great feeling. And that night, and I had been fasting for like three days. And that night, when I prayed and cried out to God and, and, and understood that I was holding unforgiveness against people, like those demons left my mouth. Like I could feel them like, like that. But that's after that, that after that experience, that's when all the crazy stuff started happening in my life. Cause they wanted back, they wanted entry back again. They wanted entry into oh, my life. Snap, Don, and I, you've got to be kidding me because they started leaving my mouth because yeah. when I realized I had resentment, bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, the Lord would say, you need to name these people out and why you are, they would, they would come out of my mouth. I am yeah. not kidding you. Yeah. They would come it's because out. the you, Bible you, says that like if we're, a, unless we're able to forgive, we won't be forgiven. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't, you know, right. I was at a point to where I still hadn't let go of things. Even after I believed, I believed in Jesus. I believed in, um, I believed that God saved me. I was a drug addict. Like I was on uh, you know, all kinds of drugs and, and God saved me in that moment. And I remember when it happened, he sent somebody, he actually sent somebody to me to pray for me. Uh, they felt called to get out of bed to do it. They came and prayed for me. And like, you know, I believed at that moment, I believed and I believed that God was working on me then, but it wasn't until that forgiveness took place that those demons left. And I think there's a lot to do because i mean demons hate mankind so if they can cause you to hate somebody else so they can cause you to do that then they're doing their job you know 
Right, because you come exactly like they do. If they have hatred towards you and they've wounded you or hurt you, then you establish hate, bitterness, resentment in your heart, and you're exactly the same. You're on the same level as they are. But if Christ on the cross can say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. The one thief could be genuinely born again. How much more is his love extended to us and the freedom that you get and the peace and the beautiful shalom sleep that you have when you forgive somebody. And I think this is for somebody on the line that when you totally forgive somebody and you look at them with pity and mercy and genuineness, realizing that they're bound, that you forgive them out of pure love for what Christ did for you, that right there is freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. That's and one freedom. more thing, I you know, I, I wanted to say is, is something that I realized too, that, and of course, I don't know if this is biblical or not, but I, you know, I often pray just forgiveness for all of everybody that I'm related to in the past, because ultimately every single person that I'm related to, their DNA culminates down to me and they're a part of me some way or another. Now, now I don't believe that there's a bunch of spirits in my head, but their DNA, their written information that they had is part of me. And I believe that's why we have certain instincts in us. That's why we have generational curses, generational blessings, whatever it may be. All of that information is passed down to us. And a lot of scientists like to call it instinct. But I believe that there's more to that because you see animals in certain parts of the world that are um, have passed down information to where they are scared of certain things. Others aren't. Like you'll see deer in certain parts of the world that are not scared of humans at all. But in other parts right, of the world, they're always right up. scared of humans. Yeah, ours come right up. Sorry. I apologize. Yeah, I, I, that's, that was my point. I just, you know, that that I believe they like to stay, they like to stay with families. I think information passes down um, from relative to relative. So it makes it easier for them to inhabit possibly. And I think that it's possible too. And this is just a theory that families that are uh, enveloped with these things, they are trying to ruin these families for some reason or another. And uh, Mm -hmm. to break the chain is important break that chain, break that yoke, and break that bondage for, you know, and I don't, like I said, I don't know that it's biblical to ask forgiveness for all of just for all of the people that came before me and everything that they did, because I feel somewhat responsible because in a way I am just like, I'm somewhat responsible for the sin of Adam and Eve. I'm somewhat responsible for right. that. And I've done this, I've done similar, right. You know, not the exact same thing, but I've, I've broken the commands of God. I've done evil to my brother. I've done uh, you know, committed sins, fornications, all these different things. Right. And I, so I know that I've a well, part of it, but it's, it's just, um, when we think of it that way, it's, it's just really profound, really in a, in a lot of ways, I think. Can I intercede and pray for my husband as well? Or do you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, definitely pray for your husband. I, I, you know, my wife, she wasn't hundred percent on board with me after I became a believer. In fact, she didn't really trust me. Like, you know, she, when I I went to jail and she didn't think I was, she didn't know she thought I was out at some strip club or something like she didn't really even know what was going on. Me and our, our uh, relationship was not good at all. Like on the verge of being done with, uh, I remember Mm -hmm. after I became a believer, I prayed and fasted for her, uh, many, many times over and over and over and over and over again. And it took years, but God, God came through on that. And I, and I'm so thankful because she's like literally the best, person I know and she's she is um I, I don't know I don't know how to describe it it's just a blessing uh so definitely pray for them and you know know that this that it says in the scriptures and I can try to pull it up uh, let me pull this up because I think you need to hear this uh, that the um I mean give me a second here guys guys um it is in first Corinthians 7 and it says, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified in the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified in the husband. Otherwise, your children are unclean, but now they are holy. So this is, you're passing this on to generations. You've sanctified your husband. I didn't necessarily mean you saved him, but you've sanctified him and continue. Then your children now are sanctified through that. And that's, so that's the blessing of that. Definitely do that. Stay, you know, and, and 
obviously just be a great example. You're not going to, you know, get through to him probably like somebody that might be a complete stranger. Well, you don't know, you know, the, even Jesus said he couldn't do a lot of miracles in his own hometown, that a prophet is not even, you know, a prophet's not even welcome in his own hometown, not even listened to, not respected. And uh, so sometimes, you know, like with my family, like, you know, I, as, as many people as I've, I feel like God has used me to touch, there's people that are close to me that I would be unable to touch because of that scenario right there. Yet years later, after I prayed for them, they found somebody else that's given them the information that I tried to give them and they've ex accepted it, which is a blessing because you get to plant the seed, you get to pray for that person um, and you get to break the yoke of bondage, you know, from your family and you get to pass down righteous seed generation and you get to teach those children, train them up in the way they should go. Uh, you get to bless the people around you and um, it, it's definitely do that. You know, I don't know. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. It did. And I thank you both for your time. I know that you're tired and um, we love you and we're praying for both of you and we're upgirding you. And Dan knows that I'm like a mama. You know, I tell him I'm old, but I don't have creepy skin. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have creepy skin that's good <laughs> anyway <laughs> I, feel, I thought I could make you laugh tonight John <laughs> alright well have a good night like and it. love you Dan love you too God bless you okay. God bless you too thank you guys okay bye hey I hope you guys enjoyed that and if you did come over and hang out with us over in the chat and ask any question that you want to ask we are going to hang out with you guys for another 30 minutes at least over there so make sure you go over links in the description uh, make sure you subscribe thank you guys so much